Hello, 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 everyone. Pleasure to be back, and thank you so much for being part of this All India Mocks. This shows your seriousness also for next year. Okay. Uh, what we have done is we have designed All India Mocks based on the way in which questions have been asked. Uh, questions have been asked in 2023, also 2022 to a certain extent. Okay. So what we are doing is we are preparing you for 2024 in advance. All right, in advance. Look, after 2023 ka paper, na, most of the students were shocked. Uh, most of the students felt that they have to increase their book list, enlarge their book list. They have to change the manner in which they have to study uh, and do quite some things which they have not done before. I won't suggest that. Okay, I, I seriously won't suggest that. Look, the ka manner of change karne ka matlab ye hai. UPSC now, looking into 2023 ka paper, UPSC now is demanding clarity in the concepts and that you have to give. Utna to unka hak banta hai yaar. Thik hai, as Union Public Service Commission of India and with, and with the responsibility of attracting the best talent, utna to unka hak banta hai ki aapko clarity of concepts to ho. Thik hai, isse pehle what used to happen is, elimination technique, what used to happen in that particular technique is, People would lag out some jugad and then what they will do is they will try to connect the concepts. UPSC now was fed up of it. So, what they have They have retained some elements of elimination technique. But in those elements, your conceptual clarity is necessary. And this is in a way our duty. We consider it to be our duty to get you into the concept at least through this mock. Alright. So, those people. Who have given these mocks? Achhi baat hai. Jino ne nahi diya. Try to give these mocks in the next <coughs> next few weeks when it comes around. ठीक है. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. Please do not miss these discussions because we will see to it that not only we provide answers through these discussions, but we provide you with the most important thing that is important for prelims. ठीक है. Most important thing with respect to the prelims. Henceforth, and that is clarity of concept. Just as I have said before, we will try to get into clarity of concepts as much as possible in limited time, and will help you with respect to your prelims of 2020. So, let us start. So, we will start with polity and miscellaneous. So, polity ka pehla question hai, and it is question number eleven. Question number eleven, देखते हैं. Okay, here it is. Here it is. What does the question say? What does the question say? The question speaks with respect to the key takeaways from majority view of the Supreme Court in upholding 103rd constitutional amendment. That is the amendment through which EWS, reservation for EWS, that is Economically weaker sections, reservation for economic weaker sections came up. Consider the following statements. Economic criteria can be the sole basis of positive discrimination. Alright, economic criteria can be uh, economic criteria can be the sole basis for positive discrimination. Okay. Now, what is this positive discrimination? This term, very important concept. Positive discrimination is when you provide certain advantages. Certain advantages for the purpose of those people who have been left behind due to social reason, due to economic legal, economic reasons or educational reason. So when you want to bring someone ahead, when you want to bring a community or certain individuals ahead because they have faced discrimination due to no faults of theirs, उसे बोलते हैं positive discrimination. All right, उसे बोलते हैं positive discrimination. So first statement is obviously right. Economic criteria क्या है? इससे पहले what we considered was we considered social and educational criteria to be the basis of reservation. Now we have added one more angle and that is economic angle. So first statement is correct. The breach of 50% ceiling limit by EWS reservation does not violate basic structure of the constitution. Yes, this statement is correct. This statement is also correct. देखो basic 50% ceiling क्या है? What Supreme Court said in Indra Swami case was. In Indra Swami case was, Supreme Court ne bola ki thik hai, you can give reservation to those categories who you feel are backward 
and with respect to whom there is data supporting their backwardness, you can give them reservation, no problem. But what you have to also do is, as far as possible, don't cross the limit of 50%. So, if there are 100 seats available in a college, reservation should not go beyond 50 seats. All right. As far as possible, it should not go beyond 50 seats. In Indra Swami case, what the Supreme Court did was, it did not, it did not conform to a strict limit. Okay, what it said was, as far as possi possible, don't go beyond 50%. That one fact you have to remember from Indra Swami case. Because there is a misconception that Supreme Court has said ki, the limit of reservation can now never go beyond 50%. So, So, second statement is also right. Second thing, reservation Supreme Court has consistently said, reservation is not against the basic structure of the constitution. It does not go against the basic principles or basic structure of the constitution. So, these two facts, what they make is, they make second statement to be correct. <coughs> they make state, second statement to be correct. Third statement, just as equals cannot be treated unequally, unequals cannot be treated as equally. Obviously, those people who have been left behind due to social reasons, due to economic reasons, due to educational reasons, they have left behind. You cannot consider them to be on the same footing with respect to those who have advanced. So, jo Unko aap jo aage bad gaya, unke saath ek footing pe khada rahe nahi, rakh nahi sakte. That is not the sign of welfare state. Alright, aapko koshish karni hai ki those who have been left behind, they also should be helped to move on in life. Alright, get those opportunities jo unko otherwise nahi mildi. That is the symbol or sign of a welfare state. So, third statement is also right. Fourth statement. Such reservations can be made in any educational institutes including both aided and unaided private institutions including minority educational institutions. Not at all. Okay. Reservations with respect to reservations, be it reservations for any community, they do, the, the purview of reservation is kept out of minority institutions. So, minority institutions ke upar EWS reservation ka effect nahi hai. Remember this another important fact. Remember this another important fact. Reservation ka effect minority institutions pe nahi lagaya gaya hai. Alright, minority institutes do not come under the purview of reservation. So, fourth statement is incorrect. Why is it so? Obviously, this is because of, this is because of special status granted to minority institutions under part 3 of the constitution. That is fundamental rights of minorities in India. Okay. So, once first statement is correct, second is correct, third is correct, fourth is not correct. Our answer therefore will be, our answer therefore will be C. Alright, it will be C. Fourth statement is not correct. Moving on to question number 12. Which of the following statements with respect to election expenditure is correct? Statement 1, all candidates must submit expenditure statements within 14 days of completion of elections failing to which, failing which can be the ground for disqualification of elected candidate. That means if you do not submit your election expenditures, if you do not submit to the election commission of India, your election expenditure, the file of your ex election expenditure, the record of your ele election expenditure, that can lead to your disqualification. The statement otherwise is right. But what we see over here is this part, this part, 14 days wala part, this is incorrect. The 14 days wala part is incorrect. Okay. I am sorry. Okay. 14 days wala part is incorrect. Here it should have been 30 days. Here it should have been 30 days. Alright. Now, because statement A in itself is incorrect, we know what is the answer. A is the answer. But, as an aspirant, it is your duty to read the rest of the statements also. Therefore, what happens is, when you go through the question and when you go through the options and when you read the answer, what happens is, you tend to remember the facts for a longer period of time. Hence, even in even if in such questions, you know exactly which statement is incorrect and you know exactly what the answer is, go through the other statements also. 
go through the other statements also it will help you build your factual knowledge it will help you build your conceptual knowledge theek hai to that is your duty now question 12 ke jo baki three baki teen jo statements hai go through them go through them if you have not attempted this question correctly or if you have left this question moving on now to question number 13 ओके, विथ रिगार्ड टू मैरिटियल रेप कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट देर इज नो लीगल प्रोविजन दैट मेक्स मैरिटियल रेप एंड ऑफेंस इन इंडिया ऑब्वियसली हंड्रेड परसेंट लॉ कमीशन हैड रिकमेंडेड इट लॉ कमीशन हैड रिकमेंडेड इट बट देन देर इज अ डिबेट ओवर शुड मैरिटियल रेप बी कंसिडर्ड टू बी अ क्राइम एट दिस एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम द पॉलिसी मेकर आर इनक्लाइन टूवर्ड्स नो वी कैन नॉट मेक इट अ क्राइम ऑल राइट बिकॉज इट वुल बी डिफिकल्ट टू एस्टेब्लिश मैरिटियल रेप and therefore therefore treating it as a criminal offense will be a burden on state first and foremost and second it may go against it may go against the husband who has been accused of marital rape what is marital rape basically marital rape is performing forceful sexual activity on your married partner that is marital rape all right second statement marital rape is permitted as a ground for women to file for divorce in india yes it is but marital rape itself is not mentioned what may happen or what happens is marital rape when performed it is classified as cruelty and through it it becomes the ground for filing divorce all right through this it becomes the ground for filing divorce as per the provisions of protection of <clears throat> as per the provisions of protection of uh, as per the provisions of the protections of women's for domestic violence protection of women's for domestic violence act 2005 marital rape is a type of domestic or local violence yes it is correct if the age of the bride if the age of the bride is not of majority in fact if the age of the bride is 14 or low 14 years or low theek hai if the bride or if the wife sorry it is not 14 i am so sorry it is 12 12 years or low if the woman that has been married or the girl that has been married if her age is below 12 then what and you know marital rape is performed on her so the provisions of posco one of the most you know one of the most strict laws in india with respect to with respect to uh, sexual harassment or sexual violence that will be applied on the husband but here one condition will be that the age of the girl who has been married has to be 12 or low and those cases are in india don't be surprised theek okay. hai statement 4 section 376 of indian penal code prescribes punishment for marital rape uh with respect to with respect to <coughs> marital rape with respect to marital rape section 376 in general in general if you speak it does not provide for you know any punishment but again there will be cases where there will be cases where the person who has been married the girl who has been married her age is below 12 years in that case 376 will come into play all right and hence it can be said that section 376 deals with marital rape in india so what we see here is question number 13 ka all four answers are correct all right all four all all four statements are correct the answer therefore is d all four moving on moving on to question number 14 <clears throat> question number 14 what do we see in question number 14 what does question number 14 read consider the following types of business people in conflict in law individuals in lawful custody of police those serving sentence of imprisonment after con conviction under trials <clears throat> under trial prisoners whose names are on electoral roll rolls those under preventive detention which of the above mentioned types are not allowed to vote in elections under the provisions of representatives of people's act 
under the provisions of representative of the people's act it is only those in preventive detention that can vote other three categories cannot vote all right other three categories cannot vote and this question has been re, has been rising <coughs> in the recent past when there has been demand for under trials for those who have been convicted to have the right to vote at least three uh, at least through remote evms theek hai to provide the jail with remote evms and let the person who belongs to a particular constituency vote for his or her constituency let the person whose voter id belongs to a particular constituency let he or her vote in that particular election so what do we see here is statement uh, option a 1 2 and 3 being the correct option moving uh, moving ahead question number 15 question number 15 which of the following statements is are correct there are no specific laws on the content allowed or prohibited in print and electronic media radio films or ott platform this particular statement is correct as of now it is the telegraph act telegram act it is the telegram act that oversees the content that oversees whether a particular content on tv or films or radio that in any way you know prohibits prohibits any of the notions or any of the values or any of the ideas all right and therefore can it be you know restricted from broadcasting or not so it is telegraph act at this point of time the power to regulate content only rest with inb ministry 100% because inb ministry has been given power under the telegram act ठीक है आईएनबी एनबी मिनिस्ट्री हैज बिन गिवन द सेम पावर अंडर द टेलीग्राम एक्ट सो व्हाट वी सी हियर इज क्वेश्चन नंबर 15 द आंसर इज द आंसर इज सी बोथ वन एंड टू आगे बढ़ते हैं लेट अस नाउ सी पॉलिटी का नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज क्वेश्चन नंबर 17 Let's go to question number seventeen now. Consider the following statements: Child marriages in India are legally illegal under Prevention of Child Marriage Act two thousand and six. No, they are not illegal. They are punishable. They are punishable. ठीक है? They are not illegal as such. The child marriage. All right, child marriage. If it happens, what may happen is, look, there are there is a circum there will be a circumstance where a girl and a guy who are below twenty one and eighteen years respectively, eighteen uh, and twenty one years respectively, if they are married, okay, before this age, then on attending the legal age, they have the option of carrying on with this marriage or terminating this marriage. So, if a girl is married at the age of seventeen, the marriage. marriage itself you know does not become void what happens is she gets an option of continuing or dismissing that marriage when she attains the age of 18 theek hai to as such they are not illegal they cannot be at that point itself regarded to be void but yes they are punishable and what they are is they are voidable theek hai if the option is available to the woman what she can do is or even the man what they can do is they can consider or they can plead for that marriage to be dissolved next question uh, next statement next statement the act makes contracting a marriage by a man who is over 18 years of age with a woman under 18 years of age <coughs> a cognizable and non billable offense this particular statement this particular statement is again wrong theek hai this particular statement is again wrong dekho marriage of a person marriage of a man whose age is below 21 but above 18 in that way is not an offense that is cognizable and non billable what is a cognizable offense basically cognizable offense cognizable offense is the one in which you cannot settle a case in which the private parties involved in the case cannot settle it ठीक है दैट केस विल बी फॉट इन द कोर्ट ऑल राइट इट विल बी फॉट इन द कोर्ट सेकेंड थिंग इज नॉन बेलेबल नॉन बेलेबल टू यू नो अ पर्टिकुलर केस इन विच बेल कैन नॉट बी बेल कैन नॉट बी 
applied for as a right. So, there are two types of cases, there are two types of cases and then there are subtypes. So, first is first is whether the case is cognizable or non-cognizable. So, in a cognizable case what happens is, in a cognizable case what happens is, you can, <clears throat> you cannot, you know, settle the case with the party involved. If someone comes and hits me or throws a brick at me, okay, so basically it is me and him who are at dispute, okay. So, that particular, in that particular scenario, we cannot compromise the case, okay. The case will be fought in the court and the co court will come to a particular judgment, whether that person is guilty or he is not guilty. Non-cognizable is the one in which, <clears throat> in which, suppose a person gives me a check and that case, and that check bounces. In that case, I and that person can, you know, settle the case. That is called as non-cognizable case. Bailable and non-bailable, you know, dekho, bailable ka matlab hai, in a particular case, in a particular issue, what happens is, I can get bail as a right. I am arrested and as soon as I show my bail papers, I am released. I post a bill, I am released. Okay. There I do not have to fight on the basis of whether I should get the bail or not. Non-bailable offenses are those in which you have to convince the court ki mere ko bail de do. Okay. That is the difference. Non-bailable case does not mean ki bail milega hi nahi. Non-bailable case means ki you have to convince the court ki you should get the bail. Alright. So, yaha pe what we see is R is incorrect, A is correct or answer therefore is, uh, sorry, A is incorrect, R is correct. Or answer therefore is D. <coughs> answer therefore is D. Okay, okay, okay. Mene R ka explanation galat de diya. The statement is right. I am so sorry. I went on with the flow. Uh, so, R is correct. R is correct. A is false. Or answer therefore is D. Thik hai? Moving on. Moving on. With respect to the recent, recent uh, with respect to the recent border dispute between Assam and Meghalaya, consider the following statements. Consider the following statements. Any border dispute between states can be heard only by the Supreme Court and in the first instant itself. Yes, this is part of Supreme Court's original jurisdiction. Original jurisdiction matlab. The case can only come to Supreme Court. The case can only come to the Supreme Court and it can come to the Supreme Court in the first instance and not in appeal. Article 263 is one of the options to help resolve the border disputes between the states. Article 263 basically what it does is, basically what it does is, it calls for, it calls for creation of interstate council. Okay. So, in that way, interstate council, what they can do is, interstate council in a way can promote resolution of disputes between the state and therefore, second statement is also correct. Third statement, the dispute between Assam and Meghalaya is due to contention of Meghalaya regarding the recommendation of Bordoli committee. Again, this statement is correct. It is an historical fact. It is an historical fact. Alright, when the state of Meghalaya was created, there was a committee which was established under the chief minister. Uh, whose surname was Bordoli and that committee, what it did is, is recommended, it recommended that few districts of Assam be transferred to Meghalaya, alright, the state of Meghalaya. So, what we see is all the three statements being correct and hence our answer is C. Okay. Question 19. Consider the following statements. Fundamental rights and duties are coextensive. What is coextensive? What is coextensive? Coextensive basically means <coughs> coextensive basically means that both are supportive of each other and both are important for each other's implementation. Okay, for each other's implementation. That is coextensive. Reason. Non-adherence to fundamental duties by the citizens may affect other citizens' fundamental rights. Obviously, okay, if you do not perform your duties well, what may happen is you may create a situation in which other people may not be able to perform their duty. Other people may not be able to perform their duty. So, for example, it is a fundamental duty to see to it that every per, every child within the age of 6 to 14 is in the school. Okay. If this duty is not performed, will the person 
who is between will the child who is between the age of 6 and 14 be able to implement his fundamental right of going to the school obviously not under article 21 a obviously not okay so here what we see is both statements are correct and r is the correct reason of a r is the correct explanation of a so our right answer is a right answer is a now we come to Arun, Anuradha Basin case. Uh, Anuradha Basin case, in this Anuradha Basin case, what did the Supreme Court observe? Very important case, especially with respect to the number of internet shutdowns that India has seen. Okay, according to, according to global research, out of the total internet shutdowns in the world, 60% have 60% have happened in India. Okay, 60% have happened in India. So, here, Supreme Court gave a decision and according to that decision of Supreme Court, according to that decision of Supreme Court, internet access is part of article 21. It is part of article 21. Supreme Court did not say that the government has no right to cut off the internet or shut down the internet. It said for the purpose of maintaining law and order, if it is necessary, government should go ahead with it. But internet shutdown should not be prolonged and it should, and, and it should not be unreasonable and undue okay so anuradha basin case anuradha basin versus union of india is the case related to right to access to internet <coughs> moving on now okay The next question related to polity is of course question number 61. Okay. Consider the following statements regarding language of the court in India. Constitution of India provides that all proceedings of the Supreme Court and the High Court in every and in every High Court shall be in English language. This particular statement, this particular statement is correct. Okay. First statement is correct. Though what we see is, though what we see is, uh, Supreme Court has granted powers. Supreme Court has granted powers for the state language to be used as the language of high court for example is rajasthan rajasthan the proceedings of high court are undertaken in hindi language so that is allowed okay state government has the power to declare any regional language as an alternative for proceedings of the subordinate court absolutely okay for example in maharashtra the language of subordinate courts is marathi okay the state government has the power to declare regional language to be the language of language of <coughs> the subordinate courts so, first two statements are correct. State assembly can authorize use of official language of the state in the proceedings before high court. This particular, this particular power does not lie with the state assembly. It lies with the president. As I told you, high court, some high courts, for example, Rajasthan high court, Rajasthan high court, uh, you know, proceedings of Rajasthan high court take place in the language Hindi, alternate to English. Take care. So English is there. You can also proceed with Hindi if you if you if you desire so. But then, with respect to the power of allowing Hindi to be utilized, this power comes from president. Take care. The state what it can do is it can it can you know request the president through the governor, and then the president will pass the orders with respect to with respect to utilizing utilizing the language <coughs> utilizing the language other than English to be the language of First two are correct, third is not correct, or answer therefore is only two. 62 they clear there. With reference to the expenditure limit for the candidate in parliamentary and assembly polls, which of the following statements is are correct? Okay. The election commission has kept election expenses within the ceiling prescribed by the conduct of election rules 1961. Yes, conduct of election rules 1961 is the result of representative of people's act. 
ठीक है तो दिस रूल हैव बीन दिस रूल्स हैव बीन यू नो प्रिपेयर अंडर द पावर्स गिवन टू इलेक्शन कमीशन अंडर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ पीपल्स एक्ट तो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट द इलेक्शन कमीशन हैज इंक्रीज द सीलिंग ऑफ पुल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ ऑल द इलेक्शन आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी येस दिस इज अगेन करेक्ट दिस इज अगेन करेक्ट वी हैव टू डू दैट ना पीरियडिकली द एक्सपेंडिचर लिमिट हैज टू इनक्रीज थर्ड स्टेटमेंट ओ देर इज नो थर्ड स्टेटमेंट सो बोथ द ऑप्शन हियर आर करेक्ट both the options here are correct so our answer will be c our answer will be c what is the new election limit what is the new election limit so at this point of time with respect to with respect to parliamentary election the limit is of 95 lakhs and with respect to state assemblies it is 75 lakhs all right moving on to question number 30 63 not 36 63 i'm so sorry Moving on to question number sixty-three. Consider the following statements regarding Central Vigilance Commission. It has been instituted as an apex integrity institution that has complete independence and autonomy. That has complete independence and autonomy in its functioning. Absolutely right. It was based on Vinit Jain case. ठीक है देखो CVC, CVC. was created based on the recommendation of the supreme court in the vinit jain case after that what the government did was it created a law based on which the office of cvc was established okay so now cvc is a statutory body members of all india services serving in connection with the affairs of unions come under cvc's vigilance jurisdiction 100% okay that is the main objective of that is the main objective of the establishment of cvc ठीक है, सेंट्रल सर्विसेज एंड ऑल इंडिया सर्विसेज बेसिकली द सेंट्रल विजिलेंस कमिश्नर इज अपॉइंटेड बाय द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया आफ्टर रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ कमिटी ऑफ द कैबिनेट आफ्टर रिकमेंडेशन फ्रॉम द अपॉइंटमेंट कमिटी ऑफ द कैबिनेट एक्चुअली विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू सीवीसी ना द अपॉइंटमेंट इज डन बेस्ड ऑन रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ अ पैनल विच कंप्राइजेस ऑफ होम मिनिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया Prime Minister of India, Home Minister and Leader of Opposition. Okay, Home Minister and Leader of Opposition. Okay, so statement three is incorrect. First two statements are correct. Our answer therefore is B. Only two. With respect to solving such questions, now only one, only two, on all the three. Look, your regular elimination techniques will not be used, or it cannot be used. Okay, or it cannot be utilized. They will not help you at all. what is needed in such answers is deep understanding of a particular issue and for deep understanding of this particular issues or any particular issue take okay, what you require is regular revision now revision obviously can be on the basis of the notes that you make but after a point of time you should you should stop over relying on notes what i will suggest you is to get formally you know to get firmly intact with your concepts and to be you know well and to be well ingrained in them you have to see the concepts from the point of view of the questions also question ke nazariye se bhi options ko ya answers ko dekhna shuru karo ya information ko dekhna shuru karo because you go through a particular concepts because you go through a particular concept from the point of view of question or from an angle of a question what seems to what seems to happen is what seems to happen is you seem to remember it for a longer period of time kyunki aapne wo question ke through dekha hai all right i'll suggest you a simple exercise what you do is go through the question go through the option go through the options and then see the answer do not challenge yourself all right take up a take up a prelims wala you know a uh, question bank and in that question bank and through that question bank go daily through 50 questions when you go through 50 questions daily there will be two things that will happen first thing is your stamina of going through questions and reading questions will increase dekho approaching 100 questions in 2 hours that two questions from different subjects is a very difficult task it is a very difficult task okay so what i will suggest you is 
कि उस टास्क को इजी तब बना सकते हैं जब आप रेगुलरली क्वेश्चंस के थ्रू जाएंगे ऑलरेड वंस यू डू इट योर स्टेमिना ऑफ गोइंग थ्रू क्वेश्चन विल ऑब्वियसली इंक्रीज योर स्पीड ऑफ गोइंग थ्रू क्वेश्चन विल इंक्रीज सेकेंड थिंग इज यू विल रिमेंबर दैट पर्टिकुलर फैक्ट ठीक है उस क्वेश्चन में जो क्वेश्चन के थ्रू जो फैक्ट निकल के आ रहा है जो डिराइव हो रहा है यू विल रिमेंबर यू टेंड टू रिमेंबर इट फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम यू टेंड टू रिमेंबर इट फॉर अ लॉन्गर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम ठीक है सो दिस इज वन एक्सरसाइज दैट आई विल सजेस्ट यू डू फिफ्टी क्वेश्चन डेली इट विल हेल्प यू माई सजेशन माई ऑनेस्ट सजेशन इज टिल योर एग्जाम दैट इज टिल मे जून टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर आई वॉन्ट यू टू गो थ्रू टेन थाउजेंड क्वेश्चन ठीक है गो थ्रू टेन थाउजेंड एम सी क्यूज आई एम नॉट सींग दैट यू हैव टू सॉल्व दैम एज आई टोल्ड यू गो थ्रू द क्वेश्चन गो थ्रू द ऑप्शन एंड देन सी द आंसर डोंट चैलेंज यूर सेल्फ ये मत देखो कि मैं देखता हूँ आंसर आता है कि नहीं नहीं आएगा छोड़ दो एंड यू विल बी मेंटली टॉर्चर्ड यू विल बी डीमोटिवेटेड बिकॉज क्वेश्चन बैंक्स में जो बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन होते हैं दे आर फैक्ट दैट दैट इज फैक्चुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू कॉन्सेप्ट और फैक्चुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू करंट अफेयर्स डोंट गो थ्रू दैट प्रोसेस ऑफ चैलेंजिंग योर सेल्फ सिर्फ क्वेश्चन देखो ऑप्शन देखो आंसर देखो इट विल हेल्प यू इन मीन्स ठीक है वॉट आई विल डू इज एक क्वेश्चन बैंक जी एस कोर का भी है सो आई विल यू नो अपलोड द लिंक अपलोड द लिंक ऑफ द सेम इन द कमेंट सेक्शन और इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन यू कैन बाय दोज क्वेश्चन बैंक दे हैव बीन प्रिपेयर बाय द फैकल्टी दम सेल्स एंड वी हैव सीन टू इट दैट दे आर इन लाइन विथ द चेंजिंग पैटर्न ऑफ क्वेश्चन द चेंजिंग पैटर्न ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट यू पी एस सी हैज अडॉप्टेड ठीक है ओके द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्सटी थ्री वी आर डन वी आर गोइंग टू सिक्सटी फाइव नाउ ओके सिक्सटी फाइव क्वेश्चन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट दिस कमिटी कंसिस्ट ऑफ फिफ्टीन मेंबर्स इलेक्टेड फ्रॉम लोकसभा एंड सेवन मेंबर्स इलेक्टेड फ्रॉम राज्यसभा ओके The main duty of the committee is to ascertain whether the money granted by Parliament has been spent by the government within the scope of demand. That is, जिस तरह से Parliament ने बोला था उस तरह से खर्च किया कि नहीं. Has the government spent the money as it has been asked by Parliament to do so? ठीक है. Third, the appropriation accounts of Government of India and the audit report presented by Controller and Auditor General of India. mainly from the basis of examination of this committee with reference to the parliament of india which of the parliamentary committee it is related to uh, which of the parliament committee is the related is related the above statements with respect to all the statements that are given it is only psc that fits in this criteria in this three criteria okay first and foremost it has 15 it has 22 members 15 from lok sabha 7 from rajya sabha second is with respect to <clears throat> with respect to uh, with respect to the work that is done uh, work that it does it focuses on how the money has been spent whether the money has been spent according to what the parliament has asked government to do or not and third obviously the report of cag becomes important the report of cag is the primary document on which pact that is public accounts committee works so The answer here will be. The answer here will be A. One more thing, guys. Let me let me put it out at this point of time itself. Other than PSC, other than Public Accounts Committee or Committee on Public Accounts, it is important for you. Oh, sorry, Public Accounts and B answer, not A B. It is important for you to know about Committee on Public Undertakings, and it is important for you to know about. You know, uh, and est the estimate committee. बाकी ये committees के बारे में याद रखना is not so important. For example, committee on government assurance is not so important. Never has be, has it been asked, and it is highly unlikely that it will be asked. Committee on commerce, even less un, uh, even less likely that it will be asked. ठीक है तो पहला committee के बारे में जानना important है committee on public undertaking. Committee on public accounts is the second committee that you have to know about, and third is of course estimate committee. ठीक है नो फैक्चुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू देम इट विल सर्व यू एवरी सेकेंड ईयर इन यूपीएससी क्वेश्चन इज आस्ट ऑन कमिटीज चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी विल बी लुकिंग इन टू इज क्वेश्चन नंबर क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स
with reference to presidential election which of the following statements is are correct president is elected by electoral college under article 54 of the constitution first statement is correct theek okay? hai normally upsc does not miss that mess that much when it comes to articles with respect to the president or the prime minister electoral college consisting of elected members consist of electoral college electoral college matlab electoral college is <coughs> basically people who will vote in the presidential election electoral college consist of elected members of both houses of the parliament and elected members of state legislative assemblies of the of all the states only no it is also legislative assemblies of uts union territories ठीक है दोज हु हैव स्टेट देर दोज हु हैव असेंबलीज द सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट इज फॉरफिटेड बाय इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया इफ द कैंडिडेट डज नॉट एक्सीड वन फोर्थ ऑफ नंबर ऑफ वर्ड्स नो इट इज नॉट वन फोर्थ इट इज वन सिक्स वन सिक्स ठीक है एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम द सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट इन प्रेसिडेंशियल इलेक्शन इज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड ठीक है एंड If you stand for the election of president and if you do not get one sixth of the vote, then your fifteen thousand will be taken away by RBI. That means it will be taken away by the government. That means you are not a serious candidate. After impasse, me khade will be. So incorrect statements kono si hai? Sixty six ki incorrect statements hai do. That is two and three. Two and three. So our answer is B. Moving on to the last question of polity. Moving on to the last question of polity. With reference to repeal of parliamentary law, which of the following statements is are correct? A repealing bill will be pass will pass through the same process as any other bill. Obviously, hundred percent. ठीक है. If the bill has to be repealed, that in itself has to be. देखो, what is a bill? Bill is proposal of an act. All right. So to undo that act, you have to go through the process again. You have to go through that particular process again. So, as you have made a bill, the same way the bill can undo the process. The government can either bring a bill or repeal the law or promulgate to repeal the law or promulgate an ordinance that will be that will have to subsequently replaced with bill within six months. So, hundred percent. Take a ordinance has the same power as a bill. Ordinance has the same power as an act passed through a bill. ठीक है, so if we want to repeal a particular bill, either pass a law which repeals the bill, which cancel out the provision of the bill, or which cancel out the bill as the whole, or else you can pass an ordinance which has the same effect, but effect of it is only for six months as we know it. ठीक है, और effect of it is only for the period till the parliament or assemblies meet again. ठीक है, उसके छह महीने तक. So what is the provision with respect to ordinance? an ordinance once passed remains alive till 6 weeks from the period 6 weeks from the period from 6 uh, weeks from the time the assembly meets again or either of the house of parliament meets again theek hai aur ye 6 months kyu hai because constitution states ki at least once in 6 months parliament should meet or at least once in 6 months state assembly should meet theek hai तो ऑर्डिनेंस का लाइफ सिक्स मंथ्स तो हो सकता है दैट इज वाई वी हैव स्टेटेड हियर सिक्स मंथ्स ऑल राइट विद इन सिक्स मंथ्स तो सेकंड स्टेटमेंट इज आल्सो करेक्ट सेकंड स्टेटमेंट इज आल्सो करेक्ट हेंस आवर आंसर इज सी बोथ वन एंड टू ऑल राइट सो वी आर डन विद द क्वेश्चंस ऑफ पॉलिटी नाउ वी विल मूव ऑन टू द क्वेश्चंस ऑफ करंट अफेयर्स और मिसलेनियस सेक्शंस ठीक है तो लेट अस सी नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर 66 क्वेश्चन नंबर 66 देखते हैं जो करंट अफेयर्स का या मिसलिनियस का क्वेश्चन नंबर 16 देखते हैं सॉरी क्वेश्चन नंबर 16 देखते हैं जो मिसलिनियस का पहला क्वेश्चन है लेटर्स गो टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 16 इन मिसलिनियस Going through newspaper is very important, guys. Okay, uh, you cannot rely 
a magazine as primary source of information whether their magazine is for of any institute okay newspaper what they do is they gradually give you the news so what happens is your knowledge evolves over that particular issue agar aapko news aap pe bombard kar di gayi okay then what will happen is you will not be able to if then if if you are bombarded with the news then what will happen is it will be difficult for you to internalize that particular article of news लेकिन और कितना सारा न्यूज एक साथ ऐसे ही डाइजेस्ट करोगे हेंस इट इज इम्पोर्टेंट दैट यू दैट यू इवॉल्व विद द इशू आई एम नॉट डिस्करेजिंग यू टू रीड मैगजीन इन फैक्ट एट जी एस कोर वी डू प्रोवाइड यू गुड कंपाइलेशन बट वो आप यूज करो आफ्टर यू हर डन विथ रीडिंग योर न्यूज पेपर एंड इट हैज टू बी न्यूज पेपर हैज टू बी डन डेली ऐसा नहीं कि सात दिन का एक साथ संडे को पढ़ लूंगा दिस विल नॉट वर्क ठीक है तो एवरी डे यू हैव टू रीड न्यूज पेपर्स एंड इफ and if you want to revise what you have read in newspapers uske baad what you can do is you can use a compilation gs core ka jo compilation hai uska bhi main link jo hai description section mein de dunga you can use that particular link for doing your revision of current affairs all right so what we also do in it is we just don't rely on the news that has been given we build concepts we focus on building concept we focus on giving background we focus on analyzing where this news will lead us to और वेर दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूज विल गो हम लोग उस पर भी फोकस करते हैं यू कैन देर फोर यूज दिसर फोर यूज द कंपेलेशन ऑफ जी एस फोर इट विल भी हेल्पफुल टू यू ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन का अगर हम लोग देखें मैच द फॉलोइंग देखे तो वन इज प्रोजेक्ट निहांग प्रोजेक्ट निहांग इट इज द प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री एंड इट इज बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू basically related to customs department basically it is you know monitoring the happenings in the customs department second national aroma mission national aroma mission is associated with ministry of science and technology theek hai it is associated with uh, ministry of science and technology basically it is uh, to promote the cultivation of to promote the uh, cultivation of aromatic crops and you know uh, the flowers that provide fragrance theek hai aur this particular mission what it does is it promotes the cultivation of aromatic crops and flowers that flowers that you know provide fragrance and also the way in which that fragrance can be enhanced theek hai to science and tech ministry is looking into it and it is to a certain extent a success theek hai what we are doing through it is we are diversifying the cultivating pattern cultivation pattern in india we are helping farmers move away from cereals which are low paying or agricultural crops which are otherwise low paying to something that will get them rewarded more all right we are promoting them to at least utilize some part of their land to crops that are non cereal non food theek hai chalo first ho gaya anikar initiative anikar initiative is ministry of housing and urban affairs this basically is this basically is providing <coughs> providing a a better system a better system in urban areas a better system in urban areas in which there is waste management uh, there is integration of waste, man waste management there is integration of energy aspect there is integration of water management all right प्रोजेक्ट प्रोजेक्ट अनिकर जो है इट इज पार्ट ऑफ इट इज पार्ट ऑफ प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना अर्बन ठीक है प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना का वो पार्ट है लास्ट स्माइल सेवेंटी फाइव स्माइल सेवेंटी फाइव इज द इनिशिएटिव ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सोशल जस्टिस एंड एम्पावरमेंट मूविंग ऑन नाउ टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी फोर सिक्सटी फोर पे चलते हैं regarding pm care fund which of the following statements is are correct it aims to undertake support relief or assistance of any kind related to public health emergency or any other kind of emergency absolutely that is why 
that is why what we see is pm care was established it was basically established in the background of covid but uh, utilizing it is not restricted to covid second the fund consists entirely of voluntary contributions from individuals organizations and does not get any budgetary support yes theek hai direct budget se paisa nahi aata hai it is a treasury jisko fill karne ka kaam jo hai it is of public or private companies so private companies or private individuals can give donations and through this what will happen is treasury of pm care will be filled and then it will be used for the purpose of public health emergencies or any other kind of emergencies pm care fund has got exemption under foreign contribution rules act 2010 yes again also pm care is not under the purview of cag remember that particular fact also what we see here is, see here is all the three statements are correct and therefore our answer is d1 2 and 3 after that we have to look into question number 90 question number 90 dekho okay we are at question number 90 now with treatment to TMS consider the following applications. So, TMS वाला treatment जो है कहाँ कहाँ वो use होता है? Treatment of depression, yes. Treatment of chronic pain management, yes. Stroke rehabilitation, yes. Neuroscience research tool, yes. It is basically all the four. It is basically all the four. ठीक है? Ninety one देख लेते हैं. क्वेश्चन नंबर 91 देख लेते हैं विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ड्रोन टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंडिया कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट द एम क्यू नाइन बी सी गार्डियन इज मेरी टाइम फोकस ड्रोन दैट ऑफर्स दैट ऑफर्स एडवांस कैपेबिलिटीज फॉर एक्सटेंडेड ड्यूरेंस एंड वर्सेटाइल ऑपरेशन यस बेसिकली एम क्यू एम क्यू नाइन बी गार्डियन जो ड्रोन है it can actually carry out multiple missions for example it can carry out surveillance mission it can even you can even use it for providing navigation you can even use it for attacking a attacking a enemy vessel all right or an hostile vessel also the duration for which it can work is extended when compared to other drones second statement it can conduct long range surveillance and deliver real time situational awareness in maritime domain obviously and that is the reason ki it is now favored by indian navy theek hai to answer is c both 1 and 2 theek hai next moving on to bimstech one of the most important organizations one of the most important organizations international organizations or regional organizations regarding bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation consider the following statements bimstech is a regional organization comprising seven member states lying in the littoral and adjacent areas of bay of bengal cons con constituting a contiguous regional unity bimstech ke bare mein it is important to know that the countries who are around bay of bengal they are part of bimstech but then also remember it is only not those countries who are on the who who have coast on bay of bengal they are that they are that are part of bimstech for example nepal and bhutan do not have coast on bay of bengal but they are still part of bimstech countries that are littoral or adjacent that is important to remember it is not compulsory ki jiska coast hai bay of bengal pe sirf wohi member ho sakta hai bimstech ka zaruri nahi hai all right so first statement is correct <coughs> second statement sorry second statement This sub-regional organization came into being on 6 June 1977 to Bangkok Declaration 100%. So Bangkok Declaration was the reason for its uh, coming into existence. It constitutes Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand as members of this organization. Again, the correct statement. Look, the organization has 10 or less members now, and which is in news. Remember the name of its members. 
दस से ज्यादा है तो यू डो नॉट नीड टू रिमेम्बर द नेम्स ओनली सी टू इट इफ इंडिया इज द मेंबर चाइना इज द मेंबर यूनाइटेड स्टेट इज द मेंबर एंड पाकिस्तान इज द मेंबर ऑन ठीक है इफ द मेंबर्स आर मोर देन टेन देन रिमेंबर अबाउट देन ट्राई टू रिमेंबर इफ दिस फोर कंट्रीज आर मेंबर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर मेंबर ऑफ मेंबर्स ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और नॉट इंडिया चाइना यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स पाकिस्तान ऑल्सो फोकस ऑन दोज रीजनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और सब रीजनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट आर इन न्यूज दैट आर इन न्यूज ठीक है तो यहाँ पे ऑल द थ्री स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट हैं सवर आंसर इज ऑल थ्री सी कमिंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 93, क्वेश्चन नंबर 93 देख लेते वॉट डज क्वेश्चन नंबर 93 थ्री से एंड वॉट इज इट्स आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर 93, क्वेश्चन नंबर 93, थ्री इन द कंटेक्सट ऑफ जनरेटिव ए आई कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट जनरेटिव ए आई इज अ टाइप ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस दैट कैन क्रिएट अ वाइल वराइटी ऑफ डेटा Such as images, videos, audios, text, and 3D models. Absolutely correct. All right, absolutely correct. And that is why, that is why we see so much of it been used, and so much of it been talked about, and so much of it been considered to be, you know, ah, uh, the next level of revolution, scientific revolution or data revolution. Chat GPT is text generation tool that is developed. By open AI, yes, <clears throat> yes. AI can help generate synthetic medical data to train machine learning models, develop new drug candidates, and design clinical trials. Absolutely, absolutely. Take them. All these three statements are correct, and they are asking us about incorrect statement. None of the statements are incorrect. Now, our answer will be D. Our answer will be D. Ninety-four. Ka dekh lete. The United States is committed to an Indo-Pacific that is free and open, connected, prosperous, secure, and resilient. In this context, consider the following objectives: advance a free and open Indo-Pacific. Yes, United States basically does not want Indo-Pacific to be dominated by China, and hence, wherever China is trying to obstruct the traffic of Indo-Pacific, what United States is doing is it is calling for open. फ्री एंड ओपन इंडो स्पेसिफिक ठीक है तो थ्रू दिस आर्ग्यूमेंट वॉट इज यूनाइटेड स्टेट ट्राइंग टू डू इट इज ट्राइंग टू कंटेंट द राइज ऑफ चाइना इन द इंडियन ओशन एंड पैसेफिक ओशन और द रीजन दैट कंबाइन इंडियन एंड पैसेफिक ओशन तो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट सेकेंड इज सेकेंड इज बिल्ड कनेक्शन विद इन एंड बियॉन्ड द रीजन यस ऑफ यू कैन से यू कैन से द इनिशिएटिव ऑफ america to bring in different democracies under the organization of quad theek hai under the banner of quad is one of one of the initiatives which comes through it theek hai within and beyond beyond to khair matlab uska scope bahut kam hai but quad has been established specifically for the purpose of keeping indo pacific open and free from hegemony of any country target is china बट बोलने के लिए हेजोमनी ऑफ एनी कंट्री ड्राइव रीजनल प्रोस्पेरिटी यस इफ देर विल बी ओपन एंड फ्री ट्रेड इन इंडो पैसेफिक वॉट विल हैपन इज देर विल बी बूस्ट टू द इकोनॉमी ऑफ द रीजन ब्लोस्टर इंडो पैसेफिक सिक्योरिटी यस एवरी वन हैज टू वर्क टूगेदर फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ कीपिंग इंडो पैसेफिक सेफ एंड इट शुड नॉट बी इट शुड नॉट बी बैक यार्ड ऑफ एनी वन कंट्री कि मैं ही बोलूंगा कि मैं मैं बोलूंगा कि सिर्फ मैं देखूंगा दैट शुड नॉट है बिल्ड रीजनल रेजिलियंस टू ट्रांसनेशनल ट्रेड्स यस ठीक है ट्रेड्स लाइक टेररिज्म शुड बी केप्ट आउट ऑफ इंडो पैसेफिक दैट इज वॉट यूनाइटेड स्टेट इज कमिटेड टू और एटलीस्ट इट सेज दैट इट इज कमिटेड टू तो हियर द आंसर इज डी लुकिंग एट क्वेश्चन नंबर 95, 95 देख लेते हैं यार वट डज क्वेश्चन नंबर 95 फाइव से विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द थीम ऑफ इंटरनेशनल योगा डे 2023? थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री 
थीम फॉर योगा डे 2023 इज योगा फॉर वासुदेव कुटुंबकम वॉट इज इट वासुदेव कुटुंबकम क्या है इट इज वर्ल्ड इज माई फैमिली दैट बेसिकली इज वासुदेव कुटुंबकम कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइनटी सिक्स कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइनटी सिक्स स्टेटमेंट वन इंडिया इज कंडक्टिंग मिशन टू मॉनिटर एंड इन्वेस्टिगेट एक्सप्लोर क्लाइमेट चेंज ऑन अर्थ थ्रू नासा इसरो सिंथेटिक एपेचर रेडर निसार प्रोग्राम ठीक है सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट It is a joint project between NASA and ISRO to co-develop and launch a dual-frequency synthetic aperture radar on an Earth observation satellite. Actually, both these statements are correct. Okay, but what we do not see is the cause and effect relations between the two. Hence, what we will do is we will mark B as our answer. That is, both statements are correct, but explanation नहीं बैठ रहा ना. Two cannot correctly explain one. उस तरह से नहीं बैठ रहा. So what we will see is B is the right answer over here. Moving on, question number ninety-seven. Question number ninety-seven. Consider the following statements regarding Tonga Islands. The islands. Are located in South Pacific Ocean. The statement is correct. They are located in South Pacific Ocean. The island is situated near Tonga Trench, the third deepest oceanic trench in the world. Uh, Tonga Trench is basically the second deepest. थोड़ा words के साथ खेला है हमने और facts के साथ भी. So remember this. It is the second deepest trench. First is of course Mariana Trench. This island is located on along. द पैसिफिक रिंग ऑफ फायर यस अगेन करेक्ट पैसिफिक रिंग ऑफ फायर क्या है इट इज अंसेप्ट ऑफ जोग्राफी ठीक है जोग्राफी के टीचर जो है ज्यादा अच्छे से इसे एक्सप्लेन कर पाएंगे बट दिस न्यूज वॉज इन करेंट अफेयर हेंस वॉट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर ट्रीटिंग इट इन द सेक्शन ऑफ मिसलेनियस क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइनटी एट द कंटेक्स इन कंटेक्स ऑफ सेबी कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग सेबी इज अ स्टेटरी बॉडी हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड अ मार्केट रेगुलेटर Another another fact that is hundred percent correct, which controls the security markets in India. Yes, it does control the security markets in India. Second statement, Securities Appellate Tribunal has been constituted to protect the interest of the entities that feel aggrieved by SEBI's decision. Again, both the statements are correct. ठीक है तो sad जो है Securities Appellate Tribunal that is in existence and it performs the duties that are mentioned in the statement. बट दोनों का कोई स्टेटमेंट वन और स्टेटमेंट टू का कोई लॉजिकल कनेक्शन नहीं है ठीक है वन डज सेकंड डज नॉट एक्सप्लेन द फर्स्ट ना सो व्हाट वी विल सी इज वी विल व्हाट वी विल डू इज विल मार्क बी टू बी द राइट आंसर विल मार्क बी टू बी द राइट आंसर ओके मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइनटी कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग नेशनल वॉर मेमोरियल नाइनटी देखते हैं <coughs> statement 1 the national war memorial complex contains an area dedicated to paramvir chakra yes india's uh, highest gallantry award in war times india gate was built to commemorate the fallen indian soldiers of world war 1 and third anglo afghan war again this statement is correct again this statement is correct third statement amar jawan jyoti was installed to commemorate indian victory in 1965 war no it was actually to commemorate the indian victory indian victory of 1971 not 65 71 bangladesh war bangladesh liberation war so in this particular question two statements are correct hence our answer will be only two p only two theek okay? hai moving on question number 100 Question number hundred. Consider the following statements regarding India-China border. McCarthy McDonald line lies in the Tawang region, which is uh, which is called South Tibet by China. <coughs> This statement is basically not correct. All right. Uh, what uh, where McCarthy McDonald line lies is the area of. 
लद्दाख और यू नो इट इज बेटर टू कॉल इट अक्साई चिन एज इज इन अक्साई चिन एज इज इन न्यूज ठीक है सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इंडिया क्लेम्ड अक्साई चिन एज इट्स ओन यूजिंग जॉनसन लाइन यूजिंग जॉनसन लाइन दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट एंड हेंस अवर आंसर विल बी बी रिलेटेड all right friends so that was from me that was from me uh, now what we will do is i will ask pravin sir to take over and he will deal with the questions of geography uh, with respect to questions of geography and with respect to the concepts related relating to them pravin sir will enlighten you thank you so much for being part of this session see you soon bye hello everyone good evening so uh hopefully you have done a good performance in the in the attempting the answers uh, the questions all india mock test so i am dr pravin kumar so i'll take the geography section of your uh, test so let us start the question number 52 so you also take out the question number 52 yes question number 52 the question is panias kotas and irulas are dwelling tribes of india where are they found so there are the four options these tribes and this is more of the more or less uh, factual information it was there in the news so answer is nilgiri hills so we find there in nilgiri hills they have been the yes they have been a local inhabitants of the region this they have been found there in kerala tamil nadu and the karnataka these three states they have been spreading out and been uh, practicing the former or uh, practicing this traditional method of the farming right so therefore therefore they have been there in the news in the recent time so next question we take question number 53 yes question number 53 is with the reference to the boreal summer intra seasonal oscillation consider the following statement boreal summer so boreal summer does not mean so do not be confused with it. this is boreal if it is a it is temperate zone no this is the boreal summer which is connected to tropical region intra seasonal oscillation intra seasonal means within a season so this boreal summer intra seasonal oscillation it is in the tropical region which is connected to monsoon connected to monsoon right so let's see the statements b s i s o is eastward moving disturbance over the over the northern hemisphere right so this is eastward moving disturbance so this is this statement is wrong this is northward moving 
north and northward moving right so this will be move this will move first north then it moves towards the towards east the other indian ocean right so this statement comes to the wrong so this is northward moving northward moving the flow of the wind as well as the heat it caused the convection of air mass air masses between the northern indian ocean and the west pacific ocean so there if you see this mark of the indian ocean this goes to the north in the indian ocean and then it spreads to the east so this part of the west pacific means this is luzon island of philippines have been affected by this heat flow right it facilitates indian monsoon winds towards the tamil nadu yes when this moves towards the north it carries the moisture when 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 this air mass when it is moving towards the north it carries the moisture and this has the effect there on the precipitation of the coastal part of tamil nadu so this has been uh, this statement is correct. This statement is correct. So, the two is one statement is correct. So, the answer we have the answer is how many of the above statements are correct? Only two statements are correct. Answer is B. Next question question number 54. Yes, this is also a very simple question. Map based passes or tunnels, they are the connecting areas so sela pass this is there in the arunachal pradesh and assam so this has been there in connecting the bomdila region or the bomdila pass right thereafter there we have to see this what are the correctly matched right so this is a uh, first statement thereafter Yes, Baralachala, Jammu Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir Valley. This is wrong. Baralachala, it is there in the Himachal Pradesh. It is in Himachal Pradesh. Right? It connects Himachal with the Leh. Jelepla, this is correct. This has been very much prominent in the news through the connecting the Sikkim through Chumbi Valley to the Tibet for the trade with the China. This is also, also correct. This is also correct. So the two two Pairs are correctly matched, so answer will be only two. Answer is C. Right, this is uh, map based question, so you must be very much careful and very much well prepared for the maps. Next question, question number 55. Yes. Question number 55, consider the following statements regarding the Indian tsunami, tsunami early warning system. Indian tsunami early warning system. The bottom pressure recorded or recorder detect the greater water pressure when a passing tsunami increases the weight of the water above. Yes, this is correct because when the uh, over the ocean floor, when the tsunami moves on, so there is a more of pressure has been exerted on the floor and where the device have been installed that is bottom pressure recorder so when there is a more of the pressure there is the detection of the waves of the tsunami on the sea floor then after real time data is processed by ocean open ocean tide prediction software and received at i n c o i s india an indian national center of for ocean information services right so this is also correct this is located in hyderabad it is located in hyderabad then after bpr bpr means bottom pressure recorder operates in this scheduled transmission mode taking samples for every 15 minute and transmit it for every one hour so this is also correct so this has been developed within the software system so, what is the question? How many of the above statements are correct? So, we have to find out the correct statement. One is correct, two is correct, three is correct. So, the answer it comes to C. All statements are correct. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी सिक्स सो क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी सिक्स डील्स विद कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग द जियो टेक्सटाइल्स जियो टेक्सटाइल्स आर इम्परमिएबल फैब्रिक दैट आर यूज इन एसोसिएशन विद सॉइल एंड हैव एबिलिटी टू सेपरेट राइट सो दिस इज दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इनकरेक्ट राइट बिकॉज जियो जियो टेक्सटाइल इज परमिएबल देयर इट इज हेयर this word is used impermeable but geo textiles are permeable fabric so the statement becomes wrong number 2 coir geo textile will be used for construction of rural roads under pradhan mantri gramin sabas gramin sadak yojana she so that is absolutely it is natural it is absolutely a natural fabric and also this is a renewable source which has been made by the coconut husk right so this statement is correct so they are typically made by the polypropylene or it is also called the polyester so this is also correct right which of the following statements are correct we have two and three is correct answer is b 56 answer is b next question yes consider the following pairs type of volcanic eruption and their location or the properties right then first is sub aqueous volcano this is below surface water right so this is the uh, this was there in the news when the volcanic eruption took place at the tonga island right the volcanic eruption take place from the hot spot which is below the water level or on the sea floors pilian eruption extremely explosive type of volcanic eruption this is also correct pilian it is it is a explosive volcano right so which take place there on the on a caribbean island then after hawaiian eruption silent eruption of the volcano this is basalt eruption basaltic eruption or this is also called fissure eruption fissure eruption means when the eruption take place from the cracks right so this is from the hot spots so then there is a divergence of the plate when there is divergence of the plate then the lava erupts very silently from the cracks and it solidifies so there is a formation of the basaltic crust or the basaltic layer so this is hawaii eruption is also correct silent eruption in the volcano stamboli eruption it is it is there is a continuous eruption from the stamboli of uh, smoke and the gases from the stamboli so therefore it is also called the lighthouse of mediterranean sea stamboli is located on lipari island lipari island so lipari island name you will not find in the atlas because this is a very small island so lipari island is a north of sicily north of sicily island in the mediterranean sea which is the part of italy right so uh, what is the question there question is how many pairs given above are correctly matched so all three are correctly matched answer is answer uh, all four are correctly matched so answer is d 57 answer is d right next question yes here is uh, it is a massive winter storm so this is the discussion of the or the some situation is explained atmospheric condition is explained 
इट इज अ मैसिव विंटर विच इज मोस्ट एक्सप्लोसिव ऑब्जर्व ऑन द ईस्ट कोस्ट एक्सप्लोसिव ऑब्जर्व ऑन द ईस्ट कोस्ट इट अकर्स ओवर द मिड लैटिट्यूड जोन वे आर वॉर्म एंड कोल्ड एयर मीट्स एंड सच अक्रेंस इज कॉल्ड एक्सप्लोसिव साइक्लोजेनेसिस so explosive cyclogenesis this this comes in the mind which happened in the december 2022 over the east coast of usa and that was a explosive cyclonic condition developed so that is the identify which of the following is the best description of the above mentioned description described in the above mentioned description so this is warm cyclone so bomb cyclone if you see this northern part there is a outbreak of polar winds this is called blizzard blizzard cold wind and on the coast of usa there is a warm air mass so along the coast of usa or either here or the east coast of usa there was outbreak of the parental situation and then explosive cyclogenesis so this is called the bomb cyclone answer is c next question question number 59 capricorn plate is proposed minor tectonic plate after a recent new study of the plate mapping across the world it is it separates <coughs> so this tectonic plate or this uh, updation in the tectonic plate if we go to the recent studies so this capricorn plate this is the updation of the tectonic plate in the year 2003 right there has been this capricorn plate is a minor plate minor plate in indian ocean in indian ocean right so this is a recent study has shown this mapping in the in the world so this is it separates so let's see what is the options are there what options are there in the uh, question yes the options are indian plates and eurasian plate no that eurasian plate and pacific plate no they have no connection with the indian ocean but pacific plate and atlantic plate no indian plate and australian plate because the word is capricorn plate capricorn plate right so answer is a capricorn plate so this is a very minor plate in the indian ocean right next question question number 60 assertion is axis irrigation over the northern india is shift is shifting monsoon to the northwest axis irrigation in the northern india is shifting monsoon to the northwest reasons moisture laden winds move towards region where temperature is comparatively higher right temperature is comparatively higher so that this is first see this x statement axis irrigation over the northern india is shifting monsoon to the northwest so here is this air is this monsoon winds are shifting to the west because of because of heating and the rate of evaporation so evaporation is more <coughs> sorry evaporation is more so the moisture in the atmosphere is more <coughs> moisture in the atmosphere is more and also this balance of the water in the atmosphere has been maintained so this is moisture laden winds move towards the region where temperature is comparatively higher temperature is so wind has the direct connection with the higher the temperature lower the pressure and then movement uh, wind will be moving towards low pressure area so because of high temperature the winds will be moving towards a low pressure area so because of this the reason is approving the first statement so answer will be absolutely a a and r the correct 
and R is a correct explanation of A. Answer is A. Right? So that. Then after. Yes. Next question in the uh, geography section is question number 82. Question number 82, which of the following can be the impact of marine heat wave, marine heat wave. So heat wave is very much there in the news in nowadays because of rise in the temperature above that average, right, above that average. Thereafter, so this is impacts of the heat waves, say increase in the frequency of the drought and wildfire, this is also correct. In the coastal areas, there is this because of the heat wave, marine heat wave, there will be a rise in the fire. Then, after there is disruption in the water cycle, it is absolutely true because this water cycle has been there. Water is there is convection taking place there on this on the oceans and which are precipitating on the on the land. So, because of this change in the heat here, change in the temperature of the oceans. So, this water convection will be modified from the one place to the other place. So, over an area if you, if you talk on, their water cycle will be disturbed. So, because of that there will be a drought in a particular area, right. And then other area will have the excessive rainfall. So, that disruption will happen. Increase in the risk of deoxygenation of the oceans. That is also correct because of the heating, the oxygen, oxygen will be reduced in the water. So, that will be the high risk of deoxygenation. So, oxygen level will reduce because of heating of the water, ocean water or the heat waves in the marine zones. Thereafter, Reduction in the productivity of economically important species. Economically important species like phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons do not evolve or grow in the high temperature zones, or their amount of the phytoplanktons is very less in the in the in the high temperature zones over the oceans. So that this there will be effect on the evolution of the phytoplankton in the oceans. So, this also reduction in the productivity of economically important species, right. And phytoplankton are the source of fishing or these are zones of the fishing. So, that will have the a major impact on the economic activities. So, and also other activity also will, be, will not be performed or will not be taking place there in the coastal areas because of rise in the temperature. So, select the correct answer using the code given below. So, impact of the uh, marine heat wave. So, this is correct. This is also correct. This is also correct. This is also correct. So, this all statements are correct. So, answer will be D. Next question. Question number 84. Question number 84, uh, with reference to the cotton crops, consider the, consider the following statements. Cotton is a water intensive crops, absorbs moisture from the air. So, we see this cotton has been produced in the areas where the moisture is more and this has the natural natural system or the capability of absorbing moisture from the atmosphere. So, there we find the more of the production is taking place there in Deccan Plateau and there in, in the uh, Maharashtra Lava Plateau. The temperature ideal for the water production is 25 degrees Celsius and the rainfall 200 to 500 mm. 
So, in the areas where rainfall is average of the 20 to 500, 200 to 500 mm, so there the, the, the uh, irrigation need has also have been met with the help of artificial sources. Artificial sources like there in the eastern part of Maharashtra, which is there in the rain shadow area. So, there the cotton also has been produced, but with the artificial sources. Temperature is also ideal there in the tropical region, 25 degree Celsius, degree Celsius in this condition. So, this statement is also correct. The third statement is the predominant cotton, cotton growing area, soil of India are verti zones. This is absolutely correct because there is a more of moisture holding capacity and it is of clay soil, clay soil. Cotton is sensitive to the salinity only during the germination and early crop establishment. This is also correct. So, they require the water salinity free. So, what is the question there? How many of the statements are correct? So, this is also correct. So, all the statements are correct. So, answer of our option is D. Next question number 85. Yes, assertion Indo Ganga Brahmaputra basin generally, generally have high specific yield and good repositories of ground water. Repositories of ground water means there is the ground water level is relatively higher because of the volume of the river is also high. And also reason the type of rock formation and their storage and transmission characteristics have a significant influence on the ground water recharge. So, type of rock formation, type of rock formation in the Gangetic plain we have sedimentary, it is sedimentary rock, right, or the alluvial deposit. So, alluvial is always porous and permeable rock, sedimentary is a permeable rock, permeable rock means which allows water to penetrate or, or water to go through gaps or the or the or the uh, the gaps in the particles of the rocks or the soil. So there is definitely supposed to be a water table height. If you take the comparison of the peninsular plateau of India like the Telangana plateau, Karnataka plateau, their ground water table will be low because they are being composed of hard rock. So, the rocks are impermeable there in the Karnataka plateau or the Rail Sima or the Telangana plateau. So, water table will be low and or ground water will be low, the recharge of the ground water will not happen. So, that is the ideal condition of Ganga Brahmaputra plain have the high water table, right. So, we will find that the statement is absolutely correct, reasoning is a perfect explanation of A. So, that comes both A and R correct and R is a correct explanation of A. So, the answer is A. So, in total we have 12 questions in the geography. Hope you have attempted it well. So, now I will pass on the session to Saurabh sir. He will take your uh, session for the economy. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Saurabh Mishra, I will take up the questions related to economy and uh, we have uh, 12 questions in this test from economy section. As you know the economy is an area where UPSC generally asks uh, 12 to 15 questions every year. 
and we generally see a combination of static as well as uh, dynamic aspects in the economy. So, uh, in papers you will also observe that there is a fine balance between the conceptual clarity as well as factual information. Some statements will be there where some factual uh, uh, you can say facts will be changed and based on that the statement may be incorrect right. So, you will have to keep a balance between your uh, conceptual clarity as well as your updation with the current affairs right. So, if we look at the questions which are there from the economy section, uh, two questions are there 88 and 89, we will see that first and then we will go back to the 31st question. Now, look at this question, 88. With reference to external sector in India, consider the following statements. Number 1, India never has the current account surplus since 1991 economic reforms. Now, whether this statement is correct or wrong, it is a wrong statement. Why? Because you see, in the year 2020-21, during the time of the pandemic, uh, because the uh, contraction in the uh, import happened that time, so, we saw in that phase 2020 and 21, uh, you can say a surplus in the current account. So, it is not that we have never seen current account surplus. Generally, we are in deficit which we all know, but this statement becomes wrong. Second statement, India only has the partial convertibility in capital account, whereas the current account is fully convertible. What do you mean by convertibility? That how easily you can convert your Indian rupee with the other uh, country's uh, currency, right? That is the convertibility. Now, in current account, we have full convertibility, but in capital account, in terms of the investment, you cannot uh, do, we do not have full uh, capital account convertibility. So, in that sense, the second statement is the correct statement. So, what is the combinations given here? Which of the statement given, given above is uh, are correct? So, it is 2 only. Option B is correct, 2 only, right? Now, look at this 89. Which of the following factors is are included in the current account deficit but not in the balance of trade? Now, here they are trying to check your conceptual clarity that whether you understand the meaning of balance of trade and the difference with current account deficit. Both sometimes may seem similar. What is balance of trade? Balance of trade is basically the difference between uh, the export and the import, right? In terms of trade. But in capital, uh, sorry, current account deficit, we calculate, we try to add other aspects also. It includes balance of trade but it has other aspects also. Which all other aspects are there? In the options, what is given? Trade in services. Now, even in balance of trade, we include trade in goods as well as services. So, both are included there. So, it will not be trade in service. <coughs> then, aid and remittances, transfer of money between countries. So, option 2 and 3 are included in current account deficit apart from the balance of trade. So, uh, in balance of trade, what is happening? We In trade, we are looking at difference between export and import. That is the balance in trade. Apart from that, there are few, uh, you can say, transactions also happening. And transactions in a sense, suppose some country is giving money to the other country. Remittances. Remittances means uh, the native is working somewhere else and they are sending money back to their family. Now, this is not part of the trade, but the money is flowing. It will be calculated in current account deficit. So, here uh, statement 2, aid and remittances and 3, transfer of money between countries. These two are included in current account deficit, uh, but not in the balance of trade. That is what the question is. So, option B will be correct, 2 and 3 only. Right. So, these are two questions 89 and uh, 88. Now, let us 
look at the other questions from 31st. Okay, so 31st is again from economy. What is this question? Now, this is one example of factual information. Earlier two were the conceptual clarity. You need to understand what is uh, a current account deficit, what is balance of trade. Then only you will be able to answer that question, right? So, conceptual clarity is checked there. But here, you need uh, it is checking your factual information. Consider the following statement regarding PM Gati Sakti. National Master Plan for Infrastructure Development. PM Gati Sakti, you might have read about it a lot. See the statement. The real-time update of all infrastructure project under the PM Gati Sakti will be provided by way of a map developed by Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Right? So, till Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, the statement looks correct. Right? But there is a factual error here that this portal is not developed by Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. It is developed by Bhaskaracharya National Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics, which is also called BISAG N. So, BISAG N has developed the portal or map, not IIT Delhi, right? So, statement 1 becomes wrong. Statement 2 the map will be built on open source technologies and hosted securely on Megharaj, that is government of India cloud, right? Now, what is Megharaj? If you understand, in order to, uh, you can say, utilize and harness the benefit of cloud con computing, the government of India has embarked upon an ambitious initiative, which is called GI cloud, government of India cloud and they have given it name as Megharaj. So, yes, it will be hosted securely on the uh, Indian government of India's cloud, which is Megharaj, right? So, statement 2 is correct. So, answer will be here. Statement B, 2 only is correct, right? Now, look at question 32. Consider the following. A uh, statement regarding e rupee, right? In your current affairs, you might have read about e rupee. It is also again a uh, uh, question from the dynamic part current affairs where some factual information is checked here. It is a contactless, cashless, voucher based mode of payment that helps users redeem the voucher without a card, digital payment app, or internet banking access, right? So, <clears throat> so, here if you look at uh, e-rupee is a contactless, correct. It is cashless voucher, it is also correct. Mode of payment that helps user to redeem the voucher without any card, without any digital payment app or internet banking access. So, here even beneficiary does not need to have a bank account with them, right? So, that is the unique feature of e-rupee here. So, statement 1 is correct. Statement 2, if you look at the statement 2, it does not require the beneficiary to have a bank account. Yes, that is the feature of e rupee. So, both the statements are correct. So, answer is C, both A and B. Look at the 33rd question. Consider the following statement regarding financial stability report. If you know financial stability report is published by RBI. So, uh, this is also uh, checking your factual knowledge about this report. Look at the statement 1. It reflects the collective assessment of the Financial Stability and Developmental Council on risks to financial stability and the resi resilience of the financial system. Yes, it, it looks at the resilience of the financial system, not only the monetary uh, policies, but the fiscal policies as well. Overall. Uh, what is the stability of the financial system of the country? That is the financial stability report. Fine. So, statement 1 is perfectly fine. Correct. Look at statement 2. The financial stability report is released annually by Reserve Bank of India. It is not annually, but it is biannually. Fine. So, 
here they are checking your uh, factual information it is a biannual report released by rbi so it makes the statement two as incorrect so what option will be uh, correct here it is c statement one is correct but statement two is incorrect so c is the right option for 33rd so, uh, I, I hope you are able to see that uh, here is a fine balance between checking your factual information as well as the conceptual clarity, right? Look at the 34th question. Which of the following statement regarding Phillips curve is R correct? If you know, uh, uh, if you have read the basic NCRT book, you must have read about the Philip curve. What is it? It is an economic theory that inflation and unemployment have a stable and inverse relation. That means, if in an economy inflation is high, that means unemployment will be low. So, inflation and unemployment is inversely related to each other. That is what is given by Phillips curve. Fine. So, look at the statement one here. Phillips curve is an economic theory that inflation and unemployment have a stable and inverse relationship. Perfectly fine, right? That means, in an economy, if there is inflation, so what happens generally, uh, why inflation happens? If there is a more money supply in the market, so inflation will be higher. So, higher inflation indicates more money supply in the market. That indicates more investment that indicates more generation of jobs that means unemployment will reduce fine this is how both the things are related so in phillips curve we are getting the information that inflation and unemployment have an inverse relationship second statement phillips curve is not followed during stagflation now this is one exception uh, in this situation philip curve does not hold true. The original concept of Philip curve has been somewhat disproven by the occurrence of stagflation. What is this stagflation? Stagflation is a situation in an economy where both the inflation and unemployment is at high levels. Inflation is also high, unemployment is also high. That situation is stagflation where the uh, the prices are also at peak and people have higher unemployment so they cannot spend. So, that situation is called stagflation and stagflation is an exception for the Philip curves, right? So, Philip curve is not followed during stagflation. This is also right. So, both the statement 1 and 2 are correct. So, answer will be C. Answer will be C both 1 and 2. Now, look at 35. Consider the following statements. Assertion. A protectionist fiscal strategy has been taken by the government in past few years. Yes, we have been seeing uh, some economic policies and decisions which are taken by the government in the recent past are somehow protectionist in nature, uh, be it in terms of uh, uh, imposing tariffs on the import or promoting the domestic industry by production linked incentives. So, those schemes are or policies are also giving a push towards domestic market. So, you can categorize that as a protectionist policy. So, the recent fiscal strategy which the government is taking is based on three things, three P's. One is the protectionism through increasing tariffs. Second, incentive to increase production. Second P, production. And third P is the projects. Projects in terms of infrastructural projects, right? So, with these three, government is uh, fueling or uh, attracting more private investment in the domestic market. So, domestic capacity is increasing with the protectionist uh, policy, right? So, assertion, a protectionist fiscal strategy has been taken by the government in the past few years. Reason or second statement, the a promotion of domestic capacity will move away from fiscal consolidation. Now, you understand the relationship here that uh, if the domestic capacity is increasing, 
डोमेस्टिक कैपेसिटी विल लीड टू बेटर फिजिकल कॉन्सोलिडेशन फिजिकल डेफिसिट विल रिड्यूस वाई बिकॉज द इम्पोर्ट डिपेंडेंस विल रिड्यूस इफ वी आर पुशिंग द डोमेस्टिक प्लेयर्स टू प्रोड्यूस मोर थ्रू प्रोडक्शन लिंक्ड इंसेंटिव स्कीम्स दो काइंड ऑफ स्कीम्स विल इंक्रीज द डोमेस्टिक कैपेसिटी एंड इवेंचुअली आवर फिजिकल डेफिसिट विल रिड्यूस राइट सो आंसर हेयर विल बी ए बोथ ए एंड आर आर करेक्ट एंड आर इज द करेक्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर ए यू अंडरस्टैंड द रिलेशनशिप दैट डोमेस्टिक कैपेसिटी इफ इट इंक्रीजेज इट विल रिड्यूस द इम्पोर्ट बर्डन एंड इवेंचुअली इट विल रिड्यूस फिजिकल डेफिसिट ऑल्सो इट विल मेक बेटर फिजिकल कॉन्सोलिडेशन पॉलिसी फॉर द गवर्नमेंट फाइन नाउ नाउ लुक एट थर्टी सिक्स कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग लो लिक्विडिटी इन ग्लोबल मार्केट सेकेंड स्ट्रॉन्ग डिमांड फ्रॉम फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स वाइडर इन्वेस्टर रीच टेंटेड क्रेडिट पोजिशनिंग possibility of future distress now how many of the above can be the reason for the issuance of overseas bond at tighter yield overseas bonds at tighter yield tighter yields means less profit in which situation uh, overseas bond at tighter yields will be issued by indian companies so there could be few reasons why they can uh, issue uh, such bonds there are conditions what are those conditions <coughs> excuse me those conditions could be strong demand from foreign investor good liquidity condition in the global market so low liquidity in global market will be wrong uh, it will be issued only if the good liquidity is present in the global market effective credit positioning not tainted credit positioning if the credit positioning is effective then only even at the low profit uh, the companies will be willing to issue overseas bond at a uh, tighter rate or tighter yield right uh, relative value analysis wider investor reach wider investor reach strong sentiment on india uh, confidence in the global market should be higher better growth prospects etc right so among these five conditions which conditions are suitable for issuing higher overseas or overseas bond with tighter yield it will be strong demand by foreign investors and wider investor reach two and three so uh, how many they are asking how many conditions so only two answer will be a here fine now look at 37th which of the following are likely reasons for management of domestic systematically important insurers heard frequently in india right or frequently in media so there are five conditions are given basically what the demand of the question is that these domestic domestic systematically important insurers are too big to fail right so this perception is created in the media that they are too big to fail now what all risks do they pose if they have this tag of too big to fail and why do the government needs to regulate them in the first place what are the conditions for that so basically the conditions are they have amplified risk taking because they know that they are too big to fail so they can uh, take higher risk competitive distortions can be seen competitive distortions means the user may have more faith in those insurers not on the others because they have been given the tag of too big to fail right they have possibility of future distress or and they have now you see if they have a possibility of future distress that is a huge uh, you can say risk for the economy that means the government need to monitor them a little closer that they should not fail because they are too big to fail then global interconnectedness they, these insurers have global interconnectedness if they fail 
इट क्रिएट्स अ डोमिनो इफेक्ट इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट एज वेल सो फॉर दैट रीजन ऑल्सो गवर्नमेंट हैज टू फोकस मोर ऑन मैनेज ऑन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ दीज इंश्योर राइट दीज आर कॉल्ड डी एस आई आई एस दैट मीन्स डोमेस्टिक सिस्टमेटिकली इंपॉर्टेंट इंश्योर सो वॉट विल बी द आंसर हियर वन टू थ्री एंड फाइव एम्प्लीफाइड रिस्क टेकिंग कॉम्पिटेटिव डिस्टॉर्सन पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ फ्यूचर डिस्ट्रेस ग्लोबल इंटरकनेक्टेडनेस सो आई थिंक ऑप्शन डी हैज वन टू थ्री एंड फाइव राइट सो ऑप्शन डी विल बी करेक्ट हियर now next question is 38 here a table is given uh, you will have to match them a with uh, terms there are few terms related to agriculture and related information is given you will have to match them right now look at here forward linkage backward linkage now if you understand in agriculture uh, there are two things one is the agriculture phase itself one is the input to the agriculture and one is the output to the agriculture now input of some other industries or or understand this in this way output of the other industries are input for the agriculture for example fertilizers pesticide seeds these are input for the agriculture so if you look forward from the frame of reference of agriculture these are backward linkages right that from where we are taking inputs for the agriculture these are the backward linkages what is forward linkages the output of the agriculture which industries are using it like the vegetables like the crops it is going in the food processing industry so they are the forward linkage for the agriculture understand now look at the statement here first linkage from the farm to the part of the non farm sector that provides input for agriculture production like pesticide fertilizer seeds etc whichever things we are using as an input in agriculture that is called what backward linkage so b is mapped with one second you read part of the non farm sector that uses agriculture output as input food processing industry they are using the agricultural output as their input so it is forward linkage so a will be mapped with two even if you understand these two you can come to the answer that a is matched with two and b is matched with one option b is correct c and d is already mapped correctly consumable input consumable input means which is consumed if you put fertilizer in uh, insecticide pesticides etc in the uh, soil those things are consumed by the crop you cannot use them again so these are consumable inputs type of agricultural input into soil to raise the crop yield that will be consumed naturally by the crops fertilizers what is capital input then agricultural input that are often mechanical and more technologically advanced that cannot be consumed by the crops if you are using a tractor that is a capital input you will use cap the tractor multiple times the crops are not going to consume it right so it is not consumable it is capital so c and d is mapped perfectly so the answer for this will be b a is mapped with 2 b is mapped with 1 c with 3 d with 4 fine now look at 39 <clears throat> in the context of indian economy non financial debt includes which of the following non financial debt now what do you mean by non financial debt any type of debt which is not given by any financial institutions financial institutions are what banks or micro financial institutions or nbfcs so if they are giving a debt that is financial debt but 
other than the financial institution if someone gives a debt that becomes non financial debt if you understand this much then you look at the options car loans owned by household household uh, is giving loan to the other family for buying a car not taking car loan from a bank so this will be a non financial debt second loan taken by a person from a friend to buy a house you have taken money from your friend not a financial institution so that will also be considered as non financial debt treasury bills treasury bills are debt given by whom government not the financial institutions that is not the banking system so this treasury bill will also be considered as non financial debt so all of them here are non financial debt if you only understand what do you mean by non financial debt you will be able to attempt it <coughs> excuse me the answer will be d 1 2 and 3 right now look at the 40th question with reference to money multiplier and cash reserve ratio with reference to money multiplier and cash reserve ratio which one of the following statement is correct now what do you mean by money money multiplier now it can be expressed as the ratio of the money supply to the monetary base what is the monetary base money in the bank vault and money in circulation <coughs> excuse me so you understand money multiplier in this way that more money supply is there in the market more will be the money multiplier or more money uh, if it is in the bank uh, it will create because your deposited money will be invested somewhere else so it will multiply if there is a section of money which is there with the bank but bank is not investing it somewhere else for example crr what is crr crr and slr uh, in slr even some uh, sort of you can say investment is done but in crr it is kept with the bank or the rbi right so that money is idle so in case of money multiplier when you understand it is inversely proportional to crr fine so look at the statements now a doubling of crr will double the value of money multiplier i told you that it is inversely relation, uh, relation not proportional right so statement a is wrong second a doubling of crr will lead to fall in the value of money multiplier to half of the initial value yes it is inversely related so if you double the crr that means less money is going uh, or less money is being invested so the money multiplier will reduce by how much by half because it is directly or i mean inversely proportional fine so statement b is correct here uh, for the 40th question right so these 12 questions were there from the economy uh, section i hope you uh, would have attempted it properly and uh, prepare economy in such a way i'm repeating that that uh, it is a section where upsc generally ask questions from your uh, to check your conceptual clarity as well as how much factual information you have from the current affairs right so integration and balancing of both is very much important so prepare well and uh, i'll conclude my discussion here uh, next asutosh sir will come and discuss history questions with you thank you
Hello aspirants, myself Ashutosh Nadja and today with me we are going to discuss the history part of today's uh, mock test and in this mock test you have find, uh, you must have find that there are some mix of questions like uh, factual, some were reasons based, some, some were conceptual. So, we will discuss uh, the background, our approach would be to discuss the background of the questions, wherever necessary I will give you the logical reasons that how to come on a particular answer and uh, keep faith that this uh, kind of examination we are conducting, our expert team is making a very aligned question with the UPSC pattern and in particular history you will find a huge number of resources has been checked and then the questions have been framed. So, let us begin the session here with question number first we have. It is about the art and culture and we have to consider the following statement regarding Kathak. Kathak, friends, as you know, is a, under the cultural part, under the dance form and here the Kathak has its origin in an ancient India. The Kathak trace its origin to the ancient India to a very particular term known as Kathakaras, the ones who tell the stories through dance forms. Fine. With regard to the first statement, Wajid Ali Shah was the last Nawab of Bengal who patronized Kathak. Now, you have seen in the history chapters that Wajid Ali Shah was not the Nawab of Bengal, but he was the Nawab of Abad. In fact, he was the last Nawab of Awad who was dethroned by British on the pretext of misgovernance and maladministration and uh, his uh, uh, annex, um, Awad was annexed and so the statement is incorrect here. So, uh, first is incorrect. Let us see the second statement. The roots of Kathak can be traced back to Natya Sastra written by Agastya Muni. Aspirants, he is not Agastya Muni but Bharat Muni. But Bharat Muni wrote the Natya Sastra in which he has uh, given uh, two very important terms. First is Nitra, first is Nitra, that is the dance form, and second one is the Nitya, that is the expression. When you will see Kathak dance, the performance of Kathak dance, you will find the dance form and then various of expressions. The expression were meant to give a particular mood, to um, uh, give a message of a particular move of Vida, love of a particular dancer, fine. So, uh, it is not Agastya Muni, but Bharat Muni statement 2 is incorrect here. And uh, next statement is Pandit Birju Maharaj belonged to the Kalka Bindadin Gharana of the Lucknow style of Kathak. Now, Pandit Birju Maharaj uh, is very important from the current affairs point of view as you can see. What we have done that we have taken the static part and mixed it with the contemporary fine. Fine. So Pandit Mirju Maharaj was from the Kalka Bindadin Gharana of the Lucknow style of Kathak, and this statement is correct one. Now, with regard to Gharana, I would like to explain you what does it mean by Gharana very shortly. Because you have seen in the terms like songs and dances, what is Gharana? What happens during the Mughal times? Uh, even the dancers like Kathak and uh, so were very prosperous. There were many artists and uh, craftsmen who were patronized by the Mughals. But after the decline of Mughal, the patronization of the arts was also declining. And with the formation of newer states, the regional states in the history of India in the 18th century, these craftsmen were lacking in the patrons. So the craftsmen and artists moved towards the regional centers. And there they form their own gharanas. You can see the Lucknow gharana, Banaras gharana, even Darbhanga gharana over there. So, these gharanas are related with that term only. Is that clear? One thing very more important here to understand, yeah, you have came across this word Thumri. Thumri. UPSC can ask this question about Thumri. Thumri is the musical uh, instrument, uh, is the kind of music which is being used to give the Kathak a musical form. Thumri is the music which is being played during the Kathak and Thumri has uh, a very important component in it. It shows different emotions and moods, love, romance through its words and expressions. Is that clear? So, our answer would be only one that is the A. 
So, uh, let us move on to the next question. The next question is about a movement called Ecchi movement. Ecchi movement. Well, uh, we will first read the statement here. The movement was led by Alodi Sita Rama Raju. He was a revolutionary, but this in the statement, he was not leading the Ekki movement. It was the Motilal Tejavat. Motilal Tejavat was the leader of this Ekki movement. It was a movement against the laws related to Jagirdar land driven system. Rajwara introduced by the British government. Third statement, Pal Dhadav massacre that took place during the Ekki movement. Well, out of these three statements, one is incorrect. To explain the second statement or to give a correct uh, or incorrect opinion on the second statement, I need to explain this. What happened after the British settled, their revenue settlements were changed. They brought some changes through the Jamindari system through Jagirdari system. What is Jagirdari? Jagirdari means a piece of land would be allocated to you and you are allowed to take out the revenue from that and you have to pay a certain amount of revenue to the Britishers and to keep a certain amount with yourself. Is that clear? So, it is. it was Jagirdari. In Ekki, Ekki was held in Gujarat. It was in, the movement was in Gujarat. Is that clear? So, what happened here? The peasants and the tribal men they asked the Raja or the Jamindar to waive off their revenues because there were some kind of higher revenues and the methods of taking the revenues, uh, collecting the revenues were very exploitative. As you can imagine the movie called Lagan, where certain villagers go to the Rajaji and he asked them, they asked to waive the revenue, but Rajaji said, I cannot do it because I have my hands tied. So, this was the reason behind the Rajaji was not able to listen to the uh, peasants and the tribal. So, what they did in the very uh, famous Mitra fair, in the very famous Mitra fair, the tribals they declared that we will not, we are not going to pay the revenues. This was the declaration, and Motilal Tejavat became the leader of the movement, a key movement, and thereon he gathered the villages in a uh, place called Pal Chitra, he gathered the villages in a place called Pal Chitra and even 10,000 of villages were gathered, tribals were gathered there and they were uh, in the protest of the uh, high revenue demands, fine. And Britishers were searching for the Mutlal Tejavat because he was a revolutionary. So, what happened? The British general came there and he fired upon the crowd. Unofficial number says that 1200 approx people died in that massacre. Even this was, this can be comparable with the Jallianwala Bagh. Even the Gujarat government last year has celebrated the 100th year of this massacre and they also said that this is a more uh, eventful than the uh, Jallianwala Bagh massacre. So, this was the statement and uh, statement 2 and 3, this makes correct. So, our answer will be only 2 here. You must remember that whenever you find some questions regarding the movement, you should read the factual one and connect it with the reasons that how it can be there. Fine. Ekki movement, Gujarat. Is that clear? Leader was Mutilal Tejavat. Only two are correct here. Next question is about art and culture and it's uh, Hoysala art and architecture. What does statement 3 says? State, uh, question number 3 uh, says about the Hoysala temples are sometimes called hybrid or visara as their unique style seems neither completely Dravidian or a Nagara but somewhere in between. Okay. Second statement. Channa Keshwa temple, Hoysaleshwara temple and Dasa Avtara temple belong to the Hoysala group of temples. Now, in the second statement, it is a factual wrong here. 
दस अवतारा टेम्पल इज नॉट फ्रॉम द होसाला बट इट वॉज फ्रॉम द गुप्ता पीरियड एंड इट वॉज इन नागरा एंड इट वॉज इन नागरा स्टाइल नॉट इन विसारा स्टाइल फाइन द श्रीन ऑफ द होसाला टेम्पल्स आर जनरली सीन इन द स्टिल स्टेट सो कमिंग ऑन टू द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट हेयर आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट आफ्टर टेकिंग द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज बोथ है कनेक्शन बिटवीन दम With regard to the art and architecture in India, we are seeing lot of temples being built during the medieval era. After the Cholas, there were a lot of temples being built. Why these temples were being? Why we have so many of temples? The relation with it goes back to the religion and feudalism. What happens? The society was the polity and society was feudalistic, and there were n number of uh, rulers were there, and some dominated the scene. so to dominate the area and to get the validation of their rule they patronized some religions like jainism some patronized buddhism uh, more hinduism and in into the hinduism some saivism and vaishnavism example can be seen of the cholas when chola was reigning were reigning uh, they patronized the uh, bhakti movement and you can see that they have built number of saivism and vaishnavism temples they have patronized the bhakti movement alwar and nayanars and they were building the temples so in medieval and uh, medieval india also we are seeing n number of temples being built and temples are a form of validation from the religion whoever has understood this uh, you know relation between religion and politics has ruled so coming back to the first statement here uh, hosailas about hosailas they were from the 11th to the 14th century ad medieval rulers from where karnataka region karnataka region and they were the territories of chalukyas and they built n number of temples but the temples were visara or the mixed style or the hybrid style that were neither complete dravidian or nagara now coming so it's correct one is correct coming back to the third statement the shrine of the hosala temple are generally seen in stellate shape what is this shape it's called star like it gives the impression of like a star the pattern gives impression like a star why because as you can see as you can see in the uh, nagara temples there is a platform and in vault curving sikra is there however in the dravidian style it goes like vimanas with gopuram like high gateways are there now in visara style in dravida you can find a central hall with a single shrine in nagara you also find a mandapa a mandapa and a dt in the garbhagriha now what happens in the visara style here please pay attention after the stone platform in the main pillared hall there are number of shrines being constructed there are number of shrines being constructed of different deities and this gives a pattern of star like architecture so that's why it's called stellate shape fine so hosala temples are mainly stellate shape temples okay one very interesting information i would like to give you uh, about this temple chinna keshava how it was being built you must remember that during the chola period when cholas were reigning they have uh, captured the orisha and the uh, killed the ganga plain and they have built a temple called gangai kondam cholapuram so history take a turn and during the hoysala rules one of the king hoysala king bitti deva one of the king uh, bitti deva has defeated a chola ruler and he built a temple in its memory to memorize or commemorate his victory he built a temple at belur and this name was chinna keshava temple chinna means happy and keshava means narayan so the temple at chinna keshava was built in this way fine so our answer would be here our uh, two statement are correct only two is the answer i hope you are getting the clarity so question number 4 it's about the unesco list of intangible sites and which of the following have been uh, 
we have to consider the following pairs which are being correctly masked dance and theaters and states chhau dance punjab sankirtan uttarakhand kalbeliya rajasthan mudiyetu kerala now out of these four statement one thing is clear that mudiyetu is a kerala why it's a art form or the dance form popular theater dance form which in mudiyetu the theme is goddess kali killing the demon darika we have covered such question in previous also demon darika was killed by goddess kali and this form the this form the theme of this art form of mudiyetu so four is correct here kalbeliya kalbeliya very famous and very uh, you know charming uh, kind of art being followed by people in the thar desert region they are called snake charmers and kalbeliya rajasthan is correctly matched sankirtana is not uttarakhand but it's manipur sankirtana is from manipur what is sankirtana it's a kind of uh, art form and the dance and theater form which popularizes the uh, theme of vaishnavism and uh, which popularizes the life of vaishnav saints how dance not punjab but the eastern part of india eastern india especially mayurbhanj and purulia region mayurbhanj and purulia region and some bordering areas of west bengal so uh, only two are correct here our answer would be two our answer would be two now with regard to the next question question number 5 is about the language and we have to consider the following statement regarding it santhali was added to the schedule 8 of the constitution of india in 1949 itself friends tell me is it the right answer is it right statement no it's not right why because it's not in 1949 but 2003 through the 92nd constitutional amendment in 2003 four languages were added bodo santhali dogri and maithili these four were added to the constitution in the schedule 8 schedule 8 provides the uh, very um, uh, numerous benefits to the schedule languages in their propagation in their teachings etc in their literary award they, they will get the sahit akad uh, um, sahit akadmi awards for the lit literary creations etc etc so let's talk about the santhali language here uh, the second statement says first i will read the statement here all chikili script is the official writing script for santhali language santhali is the third most spoken austro asiatic language after vietnamese and khmer now out of these two statements santhali is a part of munda sub family of munda group and munda group is from the austro asiatic language group besides munda we have other groups point mon and khmer which has been also spoken in the northeastern india but to remember the facts regarding where is it third most spoken is vietnamese and khmer and where in india the santhali is being spoken i will tell you a very simple thing the origin of austro uh, austro asiatic language can be traced back to the china traced back to the china its origin now after china it moves southwards and it cover the cambodia vietnam thailand etc <coughs> some of the family moved towards the west and they came in the eastern india and north eastern india is that clear so these in india these reasons the munda sub family of uh, santhali sub family of munda is being spoken and the states are assam bihar west bengal tripura mizoram odisha fine in this way you can understand or apply a logic or you can eliminate something uh, some facts which you are even not aware of so reading this way will help you a lot at the reading the origin and then coming down to the their spread is that clear so going to south so santhali here is the third most spoken why 
अप्रॉक्स सेवन मिलियन पीपल स्पोक स्पोक द संथाली लैंग्वेज इवन द वर्ल्ड ओवर यू हैव भूटान बांग्लादेश एंड नेपाल बिसाइड्स इंडिया बांग्लादेश भूटान नेपाल एंड इंडिया द स्पीकर ऑफ दिस लैंग्वेज आर बींग फॉर्म सो दिस इज वेरी एफिशियंट एंड पॉपुलर लैंग्वेज इन आवर वर्ल्ड सो दैट्स वाई the statement 3 is correct old chikki is the official writing script what happens there till 1925 there was no official script for the santhali but a uh, gentle a uh, very eff 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 efficient person named uh, ramanath murmu pandit ramanath murmu he has founded the old chikki script and that makes statement 2 and 3 are correct so only 2 would be our answer Uh, moving on to the next statement the next uh, question it's about the non cooperation movement very important movement from the point of view of history fine so let's take the statements here for non cooperation the non cooperation movement was very uh, popular movement why because see during the decade of the second decade of 20th century 1920s the british uh, power or the british rule was protested by way of two most popular movements and ncm and khilafat later on these movement collaborated with each other for the purpose of united front but this non cooperation movement gained significant because gandhi ji has said that the one year after launching this movement we are going to get the independence how because it incorporates the non cooperation that the british rule is being established in india is thriving in india due to the cooperation of indians so indians from now onwards will not going to cooperate in to british in any form be it the legislative assembly participation in the legislative assembly be it the wearing foreign cloth or joining your courts or police or civil service so all would be non cooperated we are not going to cooperate you so this was a movement which was imagined to create a very impactful protest against the british government fine so let's see the statement here c r das initially opposed the gandhian idea of boycotting the council elections but later in the nagpur session he supported the gandhi's program of the non cooperation cr das he was against the boycotting of the council election he told that we cannot achieve anything by boycotting the councils we have got the entry into the council after so many efforts of moderates after so many efforts of indian national congress how we can uh, uh, non cooperate with these but why he was agreed why he agreed is the reason behind it in this session of nagpur 1920 till now till now self government through constitutional means samvidhanik tarike se was the goal of the congress give us the self government through constitutional means but in this session swaraj was declared to be the goal nagpur session swaraj was declared to be the goal through extra constitutional measures and what were they the non cooperation non violent non cooperation we are not going to use the violence against you is that clear so this was the reason why cr das agreed to support the gandhian idea of non cooperation he realized and besides of there was a party di discipline In politics at that time were made of the discipline and uh, adhering to the party lines in a very positive manner so uh, first statement is correct here a statement 2 a special session a special session of of the indian all india congress committee was held at nagpur in september 1920 under the presidency of c r das now what's wrong in the statement a special session was not held at nagpur but calcutta and not c r das but lala lajpat rai lala ji was 
the chairman of the president of this session held at Calcutta. Now, what is the difference between these two sessions? <coughs> the difference between these two sessions is that at Nagpur, the non-cooperation was approved and at Calcutta, the resolution was passed to the special session was held to pass the resolution for non-cooperation movement. Is that clear? So, the very good difference in UPSC also you can see the last year a question came around the for the Swadeshi movement that it was declared uh, in Calcutta. So, it went in the famous town hall of Calcutta where the Swadeshi was, was proclaimed. So, is, is the, the Calcutta is very famous from this point of view and here Lajpatrai was the president and uh, and the first statement CR Das agreed. Is that clear? So, we are going to have only one only is correct statement. Fine. I hope it is clear. Next question is question number 7. Question number 7 is about the Puna Plague and Chapeker brothers. Chapeker brothers assassinated the first statement. Two British officials due to their discontent with oppressive containment measures adopted by the British official during Pune plague. Fine. The assassination of British officials by Chapeker brothers was the first incident after the revolt of 1857. What happened during the Pune plague that the British official by the name of W. C. Rand has to be assassinated? Why he was murdered? The reason lies in the steps taken by the British government to control the Pune plague. The Pune plague, the bubonic plague, you can say, uh, originated in the Bombay in India and it spread towards Pune and it was spreading like a wildfire, like Corona, you can see. So, in 1897, Epidemic Act, Epidemic Act was passed in 1897 to control the spreading of the plague and uh, it has been alleged even by uh, the newspapers during those times that a certain measure taken by the British government like uh, uh, they were uh, treating the women very badly, they, they were disrespecting the idols, they are throwing the idols in the name of inspection, they were taking harsh measures, forceful removals. So, these kind of uh, uh, conditions created a hatred towards the uh, measures taken during the Pune plague and Chapeker brothers, the Chapeker brothers have assassinated the British official connected with the uh, Pune plague and the name of those brothers were Damodar Hari Chapeker and Balakrishna Hari Chapekers. So, these two brothers were very brave and they have brought the revolutionary zeal to murder the uh, W.C. Rand, the British officials who was very hatred during the uh, time of Pune plague. So, both statement 1 and 2 here are correct. Even Bal Tilak and uh, Gopal Krishna Gokhale has supported the actions. They have criticized the British measures taken during the controlling of Pune plague. Fine. I hope it is clear. The next question is about some sites of Indus Valley and their location. As parents, this location, the matching of the location and the Indus Valley sites are very important. Why they are important? Because Indus Valley was a river based civilization near the river and all of the sites which gained prominence were on a certain river. So, let us take here Amri, it is on the Indus river, is that clear? West bank of Indus river is Amri, Sutka Gendor, Dast river in Balochistan, Balochistan part on the Dast river, Kalibangan, Ghagar, Lothal, Bhagova, river Bhagova. So, out of these four sites, all have been correctly matched. Further, uh, you can find Harappa on the river Ravi and Mohanjadaro on river scene of the Indus. Is that clear? Now, let us look at the very some famous findings at these uh, sites because the uh, 
explaining these findings will help you to crack some question in the examination at amri or amri we are finding the skeleton or the remains of antelope some of the animals have been found from which site been asked in the upsc in previous years in sutka kendor that is on the dust river river dust what we are finding that the findings from the sutka kendor say that it was a part of the coastal town why it was very near to the iran it was very near to iran from the arabian sea only 55 kilometers it was very near to iran and it was a part of the coastal uh, town but due to some upliftment geographical factors it was uplifted and the town collapsed kalibangan on the ghagar or the saraswati river now uh, dried up saraswati river in fact in kalibangan it's a very famous site and we are finding here fire altars what we are finding here fire altars at kalibangan fire altars besides we are finding some camel bones uh plowed fields and uh, there is also very uh, first evidence of earthquakes at the site ecological uh, reasons behind the collapse of the indus valley and under that earthquakes has been proposed to be held at the first earthquake at kalibangan ghagar lothal bhagowa river at lothal very famous dockyards bead making uh, bead making factories were there at the lothal and it was a part of coastal town there were main three coastal town lothal surka surka kendor and balakot is that clear from lothal uh, from lothal we are also finding an iranian seal iranian seal which depicts the connection of the area with uh, trade with the mesopotamia these are the major findings further you can uh, aspirants uh, shall have some kind of confusion that where we find the horse their camel has been found here and the antelope horse horse have been found in surkotada surkotada is a site where the remains of the horse have been found and the site is in bhuj gujarat in the bhuj gujarat the remains of the horse has been found fine there is one more particular site very famous mohanjadaro from there we find great bath uh, bronze dancing girl beard man uh, and many uh, other terracotta images pasupati seal etc is that clear so some facts has been discussed here harappa on ravi river and this kalimanga on ghagar and now dried up saraswati river so out of these uh, four all four are correct here that makes our uh, option a correct next is question number 9 uh, with reference to the mauryan administration with reference to the mauryan administration consider the following statements gur purush were the chief of the revenue department no it's not right they were not the revenue but the spy they were the spies or the secret agents you can call them secret agents they were a form of secret agents during the mauryan period so statement 1 is incorrect here there were two types of spies in mauryan era sansthana and sanchari now they have been divided the divisions have been also being based on the reason why some have been given some reasons and others the other reasons like we have nowadays raw and raw and ib so this kind of uh, sort of uh, you know system was also there sansthana means static the spies who are static sanchari means move movement the spies who are the field agents who are the field agents is that clear so the spy system was one of the most prominent system under the mauryas and uh, out of the in the arthas this has been elaborated or arthas is a Uh, state craft the science of state craft which has been written by uh, cotillia but the age has been disputed by the historians though you don't have to remember the disputed dates but 4th century bc on what you can take the up to the ad has been the given the dates is that clear till 430 this has been finally compiled so under this uh, arthasastra mention of gur purusha as a spies 
and the two different संस्थान and संचारी were given. So that makes only two is B is the correct option. Now we'll come to the next question. Uh, next question is about question number ten. Again, a match of match the following, and uh, with reference to the Navratnas in the court of, with reference to the Navratnas in the court of Ch Vikramaditya Chandragupta, Navratnas were the high officials belonging to the different art and crafts and their cultural literature, etc., etc., and they were adorned the. Court of Chandragupta. What happened that during those ancient times and the early medieval times, king used to keep some Navratnas with them so that they can help them in state administration to achieve a particular finest cultural achievements. Now consider them. Vraduchi medicine. No, of medicine who was Dhanvantri was the Navratna who was. A Associated with medicine, Varuchi was from the he wrote a grammar book, which was the elaboration of grammar from Panini. Is that clear? So one is incorrect here. Sanku architecture, it's uh, correct, and uh, his book known as Silpa Shastra. Silpa Shastra book written by him. Vithal Bhatt, magic, it's true, and his book was called Mantra Sastra, Mantra Sastra, Shapank, astrology, good, uh, correctly matched, and it's called the Jyoti Sastra, Jyoti Sastra, Jyotis Sastra, fine, so only uh, 2, 3, 4 are correct here. So, our answer would be only 3. Fine. C, only 3. Now, coming on to the, uh, our next question is from question number 74. Question number 74. Yes, question number 74 is about the cultural called cultural event called Medaram Jatra. The first statement says it commemorates the fight of a mother and daughter Samakha and Saralamma with the reigning rulers against an unjust laws. Aspirants, what is Medaram Jatra? It is one of the lar Asia's largest tribal tribal festival celebrated by Koyakra tribe in and it's also the state festival of Telangana also the state festival of Telangana celebrated by Koya tribe and it's a Asia's largest tribal festival Medaram Jatra and the theme is why it's celebrated? Because to commemorate the fight of a mother and daughter due Samakha and Saralamma against the reigning ruler in an unjust law. They have sacrificed and their story revolve around the, their life story. Second is the Medaram is located in the Manjira wildlife sanctuary. No, it's incorrect. It's not the Manjira wildlife sanctuary, but Etrugram wildlife sanctuary. Etu Nagaram Wildlife Century under the Dand Karanya Forest Range. Under the Dand Karanya Forest Range, Etu Nagaram Wildlife Century and Medaram is the location of Medaram is in this Etu Nagaram Wildlife Century. The third statement is so, second is incorrect here. Largest human congregation after Kumbhila in India. Yes, it's correct. Approx 10 million people had gathered for this Mela and it will be organized by the state uh, government of Telangana, state festival of Telangana. <coughs> statement 3 is correct, so only 2 would be answer. Why? Because option uh, statement 2 was incorrect. So, only 2 is the answer here. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट लक्षित बोरफुकन वेरी मच इज सीन इन द न्यूज वाई बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड इवन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ आसाम हैज सेलिब्रेटेड द फोर हंड्रेड ईयर ऑफ इज सुप्रीम सेक्रीफाइस द बर्थ एनिवर्सरी ही वॉज नोन फॉर द बैटल ऑफ सराई घाट फाउट इज द आर्मी ऑफ मुगल किंग जहांगीर नो नॉट जहांगीर बट औरंगजेब औरंगजेब Why Aurangzeb? Because uh, the Mughals during those period of time, in the later half, later half of the seventeenth uh, century, they were under the mood of the expansion, and they have their eyes on this part of India. Is that clear? So Aurangzeb has advanced an army, and Lachit Borfukan. It was a naval battle. It was a naval battle on the Brahmaputra, Brahmaputra River Valley, and in this. the force of the under the lachit the force of a home kingdom under the uh, general ship of lachit borfukan has uh, succeeded to drive off the invaders and he was celebrated and he gave a supreme you know uh, uh, force of his valor and he was celebrated in all over the assam and india also and that's why the government has constituted and a gold medal which is giving to the best cadet of the national defense academy due to his uh, valor and the depiction of his valor into the battlefield the best cadet is being given the gold medal lachit borfukan gold medal in the national defense academy so both statement are correct our answer is c both 1 and 2 Uh, sorry uh, statement 1 was incorrect why because not uh, it was orangeb and not jahangi our answer is b two only is that clear question 76 is about the sangam poem sangam being the favorite of upsc and it's a vast uh, genre of literature from which n number of questions can be asked but we are asking on a particular theme sangam poems Sangam poems can also be divided into genres based on landscape and location. Is that correct? Yes. Why? Because we are finding some very prominent names of landscapes like Kurunji for agricultural land, Marudam for uh, uh, sorry Kurunji for uh, hill tracks or the mountains, Marudam for agriculture, Nethyal for uh, pastoral land, etc., etc. coastal lands and there are also pastoral lands so these kind of uh, you know land information about the landscape is uh, being find in the sangam literature so that make statement one correct because we have kurunji as a hill tracks marudam agriculture mullai pastoral land etc uh sangam literature is completely secular in nature free from any religious influence no it's not completely secular because in some part of the literature for example there is a very prominent name thuru murtu gai padai in which we are getting the information of god murugan god murugan and indra indra vishnu these are the god which are uh, which have been figured in the sangam literatures fine so our answer is one only that is a next uh, coming on to the next question question number 77 here very interesting question from the medieval era here <clears throat> he was the founder of delhi ka puri which eventually became delhi he built lal kot fort and anantal bauli fine prithviraj chauhan was his grandson now we are talking about which of the following being described here anangpal one no he why because from the 8th century and lal kot was built around 1050 to 60 ad i will explain it so we are talking about anangpal two here he was a son of anangpal one delhi ka puri he founded what happened here uh, why uh, uh, we are finding the delhi ka puri and uh, uh, if we are finding the, the Delhi by Anangpal II. Then, what was the name of the Delhi previously in the previous times? 
from the inscriptions and the various archaeologically uh, materials which have been unearthed from the Kutub complex or the Meroli area of Delhi, we are finding the evidence that during the Gupta period and the post Gupta period, even the Pratihara period, Yogini was the name of the Delhi. It was called Yogini. Is that clear? It was called Yogini Pura. Now, how it became Delhi? In the 8th century AD, Anandpal I founded the Tomar dynasty. Tomar were one of the 36, one of the Rajput clan of 36 Rajput clans. And his son was Anangpal II. And Anangpal II became the ruler in 10, uh, 1050 AD. Is that clear? He founded Delhi. And the sources which establish this fact are the iron pillar of Meroli, Bijolia inscriptions, and some Puranic references into the literatures provided the evidence of Delhika, which eventually became Delhi. And when he founded the city of Delhi, he built Fort Lal Kot and Anantal Bauli. These were the architectural uh, achievements ascribed to Anangpal II. One thing more interesting information I would like to add here that uh, because how Prithvira Chauhan was his grandson from the Toma dynasty. What happened? After the Chauhanas grew more powerful, the Chauhanas were from Ajmer. They have captured and uh, the Delika and uh, they have established their own rule and uh, Vigra Raj III, Vigra Raj was the uh, person, king who invaded the Delhi and further going on we can see that there is evidence of Rai Kila Rai Pithoda, Prithviraj III from this Chauhana dynasty uh, built the Rai Kila Pithoda on the same piece of land where the Lal Kot was built. You can find it in the Meroli. And it's very interesting that in that particular complex, the Kutub Minar was built by the slave dynasty. So, Prithvira Chauhan was his grandson who fought the battle of terrain with Muhammad Gurid. And uh, this was the battle in which he was, he was, his life was sacrificed. And uh, the, it led to the establishment of Turkish rule, Sultanate rule in India. Is that clear? Answer is B. Anangpal 2. Question number 78. Question number 78 is about Buddhism. So, we are going to see the statements here. Gautam Buddha is considered as a part of Shramana tradition. Correct statement. What was uh, Shramana tradition? During those uh, 6th century BC, there was a Brahminical tradition going on, Vedic tradition which was uh, also be becoming very corrupt and it was a very uh, troublesome for common man to follow uh, and to, um, the methods and the way to achieve the salvation was very uh, tough for the common man. So, Buddhism and the other Sramana tradition came and they said that not the Karam Kanda, that means rituals, but the Karma will lead you to Moksha. That was the main theme of the Sramana tradition and Buddhism was part of that Sramana tradition. Buddha rejected the traditional dichotomy between I and mind. This is the philosophy. You need to understand these very simple words. Buddha has described that uh, he is not rejected, but he supported. But he supported. What was this I and mind? Why he supported? Because the contemporaries of Buddha, the Shramana tradition also said that the suffering of the man, the man is very, you know, uh, disturbed by because of his suffering and suffering has a root in his existence because he is differentiating between I and mind. So, Buddha has not rejected but supported the traditional dichotomy between I and mind and for this to make the layman understand the concept, he says that there is a river flowing and we are just assuming the river as a one entity but it is not. Why? Because certain waters from the down of the river through a building come on the surface and the water from the previous is changed. So, this is the life of a human being. You are not permanent. Your body is not permanent. If you are attached with something, you are bound to get the, you are, you are bound to get disturbed. Your de desires will lead you to the footfall. Fine. One more example I can tell you to understand the concept of eye and mind, how to differentiate. Suppose you are wearing a sunglasses red colored. Now, you will see all the objects around you in a red color. 
but is that the reality no it is not the reality the reality is each having different color but you are wearing that red sunglasses that's why you are seeing all the correct uh, objects as red so this has been said as the you can connect it with the ignorance that the, we are wearing the glasses of ignorance and that's why why we are suffering is that clear so statement 2 is incorrect by because not rejected but supported in buddhism concept of suffering is also uh, includes existential suffering as explained earlier if you are existence if you are existing then you are bound to suffer why because in uh, our lives it takes many turns ups and downs and we are due to our at attachment i and mind we are bound to suffer so only two option b only two of the statement are correct here one and three are correct here next question is question number 79 here it's a factual question uh, being current in news that's why been asked here kohima war cemetery is recently included in the list of uh, unvisible features of the commonwealth war graves commission correct statement present day nagaland and adjoining manipur comprise the only theater of the world war 2 in the indian subcontinent correct statement why they are correct because the japanese advance when they are advancing into the asia kohima and the adjoining garrison park was the area where the japanese were held they were not allowed to advance further due to the sacrifices made by the soldiers during that war in the world war 2 and that's why a cemetery has been built to commemorate uh, the and to memorize their supreme sacrifice and the cemetery was made during the kohima war and this has been recognized by the commonwealth war commission it is a uk based commission so statement 2 is also correct because nagaland and manipur only theater of world war 2 in the indian subcontinent because japanese advance has been stopped there is that clear so both 1 and 2 are correct here question number 80 about the vijayanagar empire certain statement have been given and you have to find the correct personality who has been described here first statement is he is credited with building some fine temples and adding impressive gopurams to many important south indian temples gopurams are the gateways of the south indian temples and temple building was in the dravidian style he also founded a suburban township near Vijayanagar and called Nagala Puram after his mother. His beautiful statue is placed on the Gopuram of the temple at Chidambaram temple, Tamil Nadu. All three statements are connected with Krishnadev Raya. Nagala Puram after his mother, he built the township Nagala Puram after his mother. And the temple at Chidambaram, also called Nataraj Temple, the statue of Krishnadev Raya is laid there <coughs> at the Gopuram because it was the practice of the kings of Vijayanagar to place the statue on the Gopuram or the entrance. Now, uh, one very interesting in information I would like to give you here for the Chidambaram Temple, also called the Nataraja Temple, that the walls of temples have been crafted by all 108 forms of dances described by Bharat Muni in Natya Sastra. So, all these 108 form of, uh, you know, karan, Karnas, they, they call it Karnas, Karnas, Karnas being depicted on the walls of this Nataraja temple. Is that clear? Also, some uh, Example like Vithala temple and Hajaradam temple were built by Krishnadev Raya. So, next question, question number 81 is about a script called Modi script is relevant in the context of official genealogy. Is that this answer? No. Secret communication? No. Religious inscription? No. Revenue and administrative records? Records? were maintained in the Modi script. This Modi script is uh, used for writing the Marathi uh, from the 17th century to 1950s and they were used to keep the revenue and administrative records. That brings the end of the session here. Uh, our next session is for the science and technology and environment and ecology.
बेस्ट ऑफ लक ऑल द बेस्ट hello everyone we will be discussing about environment and ecology questions first so let us start with environment so first environment question is question number 21 so first question is 21 the concept of loss and damage has been introduced and accepted for the first time by a multilateral platform under which of the following it has been unveiled right so uh, loss and damage was in news since 2007 uh, that is bali action plan in 2013 there was warsaw mechanism for loss and damage but loss and damage as a concept was accepted at sharm el sheikh sharm el sheikh implementation plan which was accepted during cop 27 in uh, 2022 last year uh, there was uh, a cop 27 at sharm el sheikh egypt there they have accepted the concept of loss and damage and thus loss and damage fund was established and that's why answer of this question is a sharm el sheikh implementation plan right so 21st answer is a 22nd now consider the following statements regarding coastal vulnerability index cvi so two statements are there statement 1 indian national center for ocean information services has prepared this index only for the coastline of uh, of the mainland so though they have used an ex uh, one extreme word like only despite that this statement is a correct statement INCOIS that is Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services has given coastal vulnerability index for for all coastal areas of states right and that's why we can say that it is only for the mainland india we are not taking into account coastline of andaman and nicobar and lakshadweep and that's why first statement is correct second statement 2 the objective is to assess the probable implications of sea level rise along the indian coast right so that is the objective for which cvi that is coastal vulnerability index was uh, is prepared by uh, incois right so both these statements are correct but statement 2 is not giving us any uh, explanation of statement 1 and that's why answer is b both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1 22nd answer is b next question which of the following statements is are incorrect about bekti varda river interlinking plan right so this is a question from current affairs you must be aware there is a uh, dispute or there is one issue of Uh, Bedti Varda River uh, interlinking project, and uh, they say that this project is unscientific. There are environmentalists who are saying that this project is unscientific, and that's why it should not be taken forward. So let us consider these statements. Bedti and Varda are the tributaries of Tunga Bhadra, and they are in the state of Karnataka. First statement: the project covers parts of the. Uh, shalmala riparian conservation reserve right so that is a correct statement uh, in karnataka there is a uh, shalmala riparian conservation reserve and uh, these rivers are a part of that conservation reserve first statement is correct second the proposed project will impair the hydrological cycle and monsoon pattern right and that's why it is considered as unscientific so both these statements are correct statements but question asks us to find out incorrect statement 
none of them is incorrect and that's why answer is D, neither one nor two. Both statements are correct and that's why answer is D, neither one nor two. So, 23rd question, answer is D. 24th, which of the following statements is are correct about Dolphin Census 2022? So, Dolphin Census 2022 or Dolphin Census is carried out for dolphins in Chilka Lake. Right. So, let us consider the statements first. There are a total of five species of dolphins in India which has been recorded in the census. Right. So, census records six dolphin species, not five. And those six dol dolphin species recorded in the dolphin census are Iravati dolphin, bottle, uh, bottlenose dolphin, humpback dolphin, striped dolphin, finless dolphin, spiner dolphins. So, these six different species of dolphins are recorded in dolphin census 2022 and that is why first statement which says that five species are recorded is incorrect. First statement is incorrect. Second, it is an annual exercise to headcount dolphins inhabiting the water bodies of Ganga river. Again, it is not about Ganga river, it is about Chilka lake and that is why second statement is also an incorrect statement. Fine. So, both these statements are incorrect statements and that is why answer of this question is neither one nor two. 24, answer is D. 25, regarding the harmful impacts of riverbed mining, consider the following statements. So, uh, the question is about harmful impacts of riverbed mining. Statement 1, extinction of garyals in India is considered due to this reason. Right. So, this is considered as one of the threats to the habitat of gadial because riverbeds are considered as habitats of gadial. They carry out their breeding activities on the riverbeds and that is why if riverbeds are getting destructed because of sand mining, obviously there will be an impact on gadial. So, first statement is correct. Statement 2, disturbance of underwater and coastal sand causes turbidity in the water and influence coral growth. Right. So, this statement is also a correct statement because we know that there are certain specific conditions for the growth and survival of corals. One of them is uh, the sediment in the water should not be high. Right? Turbidity of water, if it increases, it will have its impact on photosynthesis carried out by zoos and tele algae, which is an integral part of coral reef. And that is why in case uh, turbidity increases, that will have its impact on coral growth. So, both these statements are correct statements. But again, they are not related and that is why answer is B, both statement 1 and 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1. So, question number 25, answer is B. Next, question number 26, consider the following statements. First, particulate matter consists of a complex mixture of solid and liquid particles of organic and inorganic substances suspended in the air right so particulate matters are solid or solid particles or liquid droplets uh, they may come from organic sources for example pollen grains are uh, particulate matters or they may even come from inorganic substances for example cement production lead to production of dust that is uh, a kind of inorganic particulate matter right so they are organic as well as inorganic and they remain suspended in air. First statement is correct. Second, particulate matter may be emitted directly or may be a part of secondary processes in the atmosphere. So, this statement is also a correct statement. They may be uh, emitted directly from the source, for example, cement industry, volcanic eruptions or even let us say uh, fire, uh, forest fires. They, these kind of uh, processes lead to emission of uh, particulate mat matters directly or particulate matters may also be produced as a result of reaction between primary pollutants and certain environmental conditions like sunlight, moisture, etc. Right? So, both these statements are correct. So, second statement is also a correct statement. Third, particulate matter 2.5 can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the blood stream. So, given their small size, particulate matters can, uh, uh, can enter into blood stream as well. right? So, all these three statements are correct statement. So, question is asking how many of the above statements are correct. So, all three are correct and that is why answer is C. 
26th answer is C. Next, 27th. Consider the following statements. First, changes in ocean chemistry can affect the behavior of hard shelled organisms as well as non calcifying organisms. Right? So, uh, if there is increase in uh, acidity of ocean or if there is, let us say, uh, change in the chemistry of ocean oceanic water obviously there will be impact on the marine organisms living in uh, ocean and primarily that impact will be seen on hard shelled organisms or the organisms which have no, uh, which which are non calcifying so first statement is a correct statement second algae and sea grasses may benefit from the acidification of ocean right so acidification of ocean is the result of dissolution of CO2 in oceanic water. So, if there is more CO2, obviously uh, photosynthesis will increase for these organisms like algae and sea grasses and that is why they will be benefited because their growth will be large growth. So, both, uh, second statement is also correct. Third, currently the oceans average pH is now around 8.1 which is basic or alkaline. So, that statement is a correct statement. Right, so all these three statements are correct, but question is asking us how many of the above statements are incorrect. So all three statements are correct, and that's why none is incorrect, and hence answer is D. Twenty seventh question, answer is D. Twenty eighth, with reference to national afforestation program, consider the following statements. First, it aims at protecting, restoring, enhancing India's diminishing forest cover and responding to climate change by a combination of adaptation and mitigation measures. Right? So, this uh, statement is a correct statement because under national afforestation program, there is focus on increasing forest cover in India and thus will be, we are adopting a kind of adaptation as well as mitigation approach towards climate change. First statement is correct. Second, compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authority fund that is CAMPA fund is used in plantation activity including compensatory afforestation by states or UTs. Right? So, this is again a correct statement for afforestation in states or UTs, CAMPA funds are used. So, both these statements are correct statements and that is why answer of this question is C, both 1 and 2. 28th question answer is C. Next now, 29th, consider the following statements regarding biological interaction. First, biological control methods adopted in agricultural pest control are based on ability of the predator to regulate prey population, right. So, when we use, let us say, biological control methods, for example, use of frogs, so that they will be able to take care of insects that are uh, uh, that are getting, uh, whose population has increased in the agricultural field. So, uh, if we use that method, obviously we are using because, we are using frogs because they will be able to feed on insects that are increasing in the agricultural land, right. So, yes, biological control methods, uh, their uh, utility depends upon or it's, uh, it depends upon the ability of predator to regulate prey population. So, first statement is a correct statement. Second, predators increases the intensity of competition among competing prey species. Right? So, they do not increase, rather they decrease because they are feeding on prey and that is why if there are lesser prey, uh, if there is lesser prey population, obviously competition amongst prey population will reduce. So, second statement is incorrect statement here. Third, in the rocky intertidal communities of the American Pacific coast, the starfish pizaster is an important predator, right. So, this statement is a correct statement in Rockies, sorry, uh, in American uh, Pacific coast, starfish pizaster is an important predator. So, first and third statements are correct. Second is incorrect. We are supposed to find out how many of these statements are correct. So, only two statements are correct and that is why answer is B, only two. 29th answer is B. 30th question, consider the following statements regarding the National Adaptation Fund for Climate Change, NAFCC. 
So NAFCC was established in 2015 and NABARD, uh, this fund is established under NABARD. So this fund was established to make sure that the uh, adaptation project in states and union territories are financed because adaptation projects mostly they are costly and that's why uh, they need hand holding uh, for, for the state governments and union territories and that's why this fund was created in 20. 15. Let's consider statement. Statement 1. It was established in 2015 to finance adaptation projects and programs in developing country parties to the Kyoto Protocol. Right. So, this statement is a correct statement. Statement 2. NABARD has been designated as National Implementing Entity for Implementation of Adaptation Projects under NAFCC as well as for Adaptation Fund under Kyoto Protocol. Right, so, both these statements are correct statements regarding National Adaptation Fund for Climate Change. And that is my answer is, uh, again these statements are not related and that is my answer is both statement 1 and 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1. Thirtieth question, answer is B. Next now, now next question from environment is question number 51. Okay. So question number 51, consider the following pairs. So on one hand we have river and on other we have national park or wildlife sanctuary associated with those rivers. First is Kabini river and it's uh, its pair is matched with and it is matched with why not wildlife sanctuary which is a correct statement right so this pair is correct pair kabini uh, river flows through or it is associated with why, why, why not wildlife sanctuary second the hing river uh, its pair is with kaziranga national park which is incorrect the hing should be matched with namdhapa national park and we know that from kaziranga we have rivers like brahmaputra muradi blue uh, then the flu and Mora Dhansiri. These four rivers crisscross uh, this Kaziranga National Park. Brahmaputra, the flu, Mora the flu, and Mora Dhansiri. These are the rivers through Kaziranga National Park, and that's why second statement, second pair is incorrect. Third, Alaknanda River. It is matched with Gangotri National Park, which is again incorrect. It is Bhagirathi, which is associated with. Gangotri National Park. So, second and third pair are incorrect. Only one is correct and that is why answer is B, only one. 51 answer is B. Next question is 86. Next environment question is 86. Okay. Consider the following statements regarding the conservation assured tiger standards, CATS. So, uh, CATS is, uh, is a criteria that allows tiger conservation sites to know whether their efforts are in sync with tiger conservation or not. Right? So, it is a kind of standard which uh, allows tiger conservation sites to understand, to know whether, they, whether the practices followed in their jurisdiction are in sync with tiger conservation or not and that is why CATS or CATS this, uh, these standards are considered as an important part of TX2 target that is doubling tigers population in, uh, uh, in the world. Right? So, let us consider these statements and these standards were given in 2013. First statement. CATS is a set of criteria that allows tiger sites to check if their management will lead to successful tiger conservation or not. So, first statement is a correct statement. Second, India has the largest number of sites that are CATS approved. So, this statement is an incorrect statement because there are only two sites which are approved by CATS. One is in Nepal and it is Chitwan National Park and second is in Russia and it is Sikote Elin Natural Nature Reserve, Sikote Elin Nature Reserve. So, these two sites are there, uh, one is in Nepal and second is in Russia. So, India does not have CATS site. 
So second statement is incorrect. Only first is correct, but they are asking us to find out incorrect statement. So answer should be B to only 86 answer is B. Next 87th question. This question is simple question. Consider the following statements regarding ecosystem. First, ecosystem is considered as a functional unit of nature, right? So uh, this is a definition of ecosystem. It is considered as structural and functional unit of nature. First statement is correct. Second, vertical distribution of different species occupying different levels is called stratification, right? So that statement is also a correct statement. Third, without nutrient cycling and energy flow, an ecosystem can never exist, right? So the most important functions that are carried out in any ecosystem are nutrient cycling, uh, nutrient cycle and energy flow. Without them, ecosystem cannot exist because the ecosystem consists of biotic and abiotic components and there has to be a flow of nutrients from abiotic to biotic and back and there has to be a flow from flow of energy from producers to consumers, right? So all these three statements are correct statements. How many statements are correct? All three and that's why answer is C, all three. So 87th question, answer is C. So that is about questions from environment. Now we will move to questions from science and technology. So science and technology questions were bit are bit difficult. So let us start science and technology. First question is 41. Consider the following statements. First, dark genome is that part of the coding genome region which are most prone to mutation. Now, this statement is an incorrect statement because dark genome is non-coding genomic region. Right? It is non-coding genomic region. It is not coding genomic region. Uh, it is non-coding genomic region of DNA. And it is poorly understood region and that's why it is called as dark genome. So first statement which says that dark genome is uh, the part of coding genome is incorrect. It is non, it is a part of non-coding gene. Second, it has been discovered that they play critical roles in regulating gene expression and other cellular processes, right? So earlier it was considered that dark genome is junk genome. But that is not the case. Now, new researches have uh, come forward and they say that they play, dark genome play an important role for, uh, for regulating gene expression and various other cellular processes. Second statement is correct. Third, the dark genome is estimated to make up the majority of human genome. So, this statement is also a correct statement. They say that uh, dark genome makes up to 98% of human genome, right? You can imagine 98% is dark genome. So only second and third statements are correct statements. First is incorrect. Answer is, so how many statements are correct? Only two statements are correct. And that's why answer is B. Question number 41, answer is B. 42, consider the following statements about Perovskite materials. Now, what are perovskite materials? Perovskite materials are those materials that have a specific crystal structure, right? They are they have specific crystal structure and they are named after perovskite uh, mineral uh, that is that consists of calcium titanium oxide, right? So they have specific structure, specific crystal structure. And that's why they are named as perovskite material. So let us consider the statements first. Perovskite materials share a similar structure which display a myriad of exciting properties like superconductivity. Right. So perovskite material, because of their unique crystal structure, show various electronic and optical properties, which also includes superconductivity. Right. And that's why first statement is a correct statement. Second, these materials are considered as a promising alternative to traditional silicon based solar cells. So uh, this is also a correct statement given their low cost and high efficiency in energy conservation uh, or energy conversion. 
perovskite materials are considered as important material for the production of more efficient solar cells. But why we are not using it? So, there is a problem related to scalability of perovskite materials and also they say that there are stability issues related to perovskite materials and that is why we have not started use of uh, uh, perovskite materials in solar panels on a large scale. So, second statement is a correct statement. It is considered as an alternative for uh, traditional silicon based solar cells. Third, calcium titanium oxide was the first discovered perovskite, right? So, and that is why uh, the, uh, the perovskite material, perovskite mineral is calcium titanium oxide and uh, the materials which have unique or specific crystal structure, they are called as perovskite material after calcium titanium oxide which is nothing but perovskite mineral. So, all these three statements are correct statements. How many are correct? All three. That is why answer is C. Question number 42, answer is C. Next now, 43. With reference to Bharatiya Nirdeshak Dravya BND, consider the following statements. Now, what exactly is BND? So, BND is, uh, is the trademark of Certified Reference Material. CND, certified uh, sorry, uh, certified reference material CRM, uh, which is produced by CSIR and National Physical Laboratory, right? CSIR and NPL they have given one uh, one trademark of certified ref reference material CRM, and that is what is uh, that is what is Bharatiya Nirdeshak Dravya BND. Let us consider these statements. Statement 1. It is the trademark of certified reference material produced by CSIR National, Inf uh, National Physical Laboratory. Right? So, this statement is a correct statement. Second, statement 2. It will facilitate India to becoming the member of, uh, member of International Bureau of Weights and Measure. India is already a member of International Bureau of Weights and Measure and that is why BND will not facilitate membership of international uh, international bureau of weights and measure and that's why second statement is incorrect first statement is correct second is incorrect and hence answer of this question is c statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect answer is c next now which uh, 44 which of the following statements regarding a binary star system is incorrect so what is a binary star system so, binary star system is a system of two orbiting stars uh, which are orbiting around a common mass, right? So, these stars, they orbit around a common mass and on the basis of brightness, they are, uh, they are termed as primary, uh, primary star and secondary star, right? So, let us consider these statements. A, when the star, when the stars are at closest passage of binary stars, a sudden increase in integrated brightness is observed, right? So, this happens when uh, there is a star that uh, passes close by the binary system, the brightness increases. So, this statement is a correct statement. B, the surface of all the binary stars consists exclusively of hydrogen and helium. Now, this statement is incorrect. So, binary stars have abundance of elements which are heavier than hydrogen and helium and that is why it is not abundance of hydrogen and helium and that is why B is incorrect and that is our answer. Answer of question number 44 is B but we will read C and D. C is some of the binary stars can exhibit either very weak or no magnetic field right. So, that is possible. D heartbeat stars are the binary star systems where each star travels in a highly elliptical orbit around the common center of mass, right? So, this was recently discovered and that is why this question is being asked. Heartbeat is a, uh, uh, is a system of binary stars and uh, they, they rotate in a highly elliptical orbit around the common mass of center, uh, common center of mass. So, 44th question answer is B. Next now, 45. Visually challenged students in India will soon have the access to Braille maps, 
design and developed using digital embossing technology regarding this consider the following statements right so the question is about uh, the question is about braille maps which are developed on the basis of digital embossing technology statement 1 the digital embossing technology eliminates the need for printing plates emitting no pollutants or waste and their durability also increases right so digital embossing technique uh, helps us to reduce pollutants waste and helps us to uh, reduce overall energy usage as well so first statement is a correct statement second this technology has been introduced and implemented first time in india by national atlas by national atlas and thematic mapping organization natmo right so this statement is a correct statement and this natmo functions as an attached office under department of science and technology right so both these statements are correct statements but they are not related and that's why answer is b both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1 so question number 45 answer is b next now 46 consider the following so uh, how many of the above above are the applications of stem cell therapy so stem cells are undifferentiated cells they have not been assigned with special uh, specialized role as of now but they have the potential to become or to develop into specialized cells tissues and organs and when we use stem cells for certain treatment that is called as stem cells therapy so on the basis of stem cells therapy it is possible to repair damaged bones cartilage and tissues in the joints it is also possible to treat parkinson's disease it is also possible to treat sickle cell anemia but using stem cell therapy it is not possible to treat mitochondrial diseases and uh, we won't be able to make three parent babies using stem cells and that's why third is not correct first second fourth are correct and hence answer is only 3 1 2 and 4 answer is 3 c 46 answer is c 47 with reference to electron beam lithography consider the following statements now what do we mean by electron beam lithography so it is a technique which is used to make fine patterns fine patterns with uh, resolution less than 10 nanometers right using electron beam lithography what we can do we can develop fine patterns whose size is 10 nanometers or less and for the development of these patterns what we use we use beams of electron right let us consider the statement first it is widely used in electronics industries to make semiconductor devices first statement is correct statement second it uses uv light to draw pattern on electron sensitive surface incorrect we use we use uh, electron beams not uv rays uv rays are used for photolithography third statement electron beam lithography offers better resolution than photolithography so it is photolithography that uses uv light but uh, the resolution offered by electron beam lithography is more than uh, photolithography so first and third statements are correct and that's why answer is b only two statements are correct and they are first and third second statement is incorrect 47 answer is b 48 with reference to ultra high energy cosmic rays consider the following statements statement 1 these are the most energetic particles that have been observed in the universe so this statement is a correct statement ultra high energy cosmic rays are the uh, are the rays whose energy is 10 million times higher than the energy uh, than the particles created by particles produced by uh, lhc light hadron collider right so first statement is a correct statement they are most energetic second statement 2 active galactic nuclei are considered as one of the main source sources to produce these rays 
So uh, we have not uh, identified the origin of these ultra high energy cosmic rays as of now, but there is a uh, consensus that they are their main source is is active galactic nuclei. So both these statements are correct, but they are independent, and that's why answer is B. Both one and two are correct, but statement two is not the correct explanation of statement one. Forty-eight answer is B. Now next question forty-nine. Down detector recently seen in the news gives information related to. So down detector is a website where uh, users uh, users. Report their their concerns related to let's say login problems, uh, page loading problem, and on the basis of that, uh, we will be able to solve means the uh, the authorities will be able to solve the uh, problems that are being faced by users, right? So answer of this question is A. It is real time status and outage information for all kinds of services that users consider vital to their everyday lives and work. So down detector is a website. Answer of this question is A. Forty nine. Answer is A. Fiftieth question. With reference to the dark matter in universe, consider the following statements. So dark matter, you must be aware, the universe uh, consists of dark energy and dark matter. So dark energy uh, consists of sixty five percent of the universe. Dark matter consists of uh, Six twenty-seven uh, percent of the universe. Sixty-eight is dark energy. Twenty-seven is dark matter. So they together consist of ninety-five percent of the universe. And uh, the understanding of universe that we have is only about five percent. Let us consider these statements first. Dark matter is called dark because it does not interact with the electromagnetic field. right so first statement is correct statement dark matter is inferred on the basis of uh, gravitational attraction uh, that it uh, creates rather than its lumin luminous nature right it is it is gravitational attraction that helps us understand presence of dark matter so first statement is correct they do not interact with electronic uh, electromagnetic field second statement the presence of unique gamma rays in the universe proves the presence of dark matter in the universe again incorrect if they are not interacting uh, if they do not interact with electromagnetic field they obviously will not uh, produce gamma rays so second statement is incorrect only one is correct and answer is a one only 50th question answer is a next question is 68 So, sixty-eighth question: Cuprate semiconductors are often called a strange group of metals because they exhibit a number of unusual and unexpected properties that challenge our understanding of condensed matter physics. Which of the following are those properties? So, this question is a difficult question, and that's why we will not discuss in. Uh, discuss this question in detail i'll tell you the answer answer is 1 3 and 4 answer is 1 3 and 4 that means the uh, cuprate semiconductors exhibit properties like high temperature superconductivity uh, they uh, also exhibit strong electron electron interaction and they have uh, they also have exhibition of a pseudo gap phase they do not have uh, they do not have a property which Uh, strictly follows fermi liquid theory they are considered as non fermi liquid they follow non fermi liquid theory right and answer that's why is 1 3 and 4 which is mentioned in option c 68th question answer in c it is a difficult question do not go into details of it next now 69 consider the following statements about microchips right so microchips were in news last year given the shortage of microchips because of various reasons let us consider the state statements first these are a set of electronic circuits on a small flat piece of silicon right so that is a correct statement it is a kind of circuit on a uh, flat small flat piece of silicon first is correct second graphene and carbon nanotubes are being considered as the potential material for 
potential materials to produce microchips. So, silicon and carbon nanotubes, uh, graphene and carbon nanotubes are used in the production of microchips. Third, uh, N that is non and N A N D means non and flash is a memory chip that can store data even if the device is turned off, right? So, that is correct statement. Uh, third statement is correct statement. Fourth, chips enable applications such as virtual reality and on device artificial intelligence, but cannot transfer data. So, this is incorrect. Chips uh, helps us in virtual reality. They also helps, it, helps us uh, on, on device artificial intelligence and they also carry out data transfer. And that is why fourth statement which says that they cannot transfer data is incorrect. So, only first three statements are correct. Question is asking us how many statements are correct. So, three statements are correct and that is why answer is C, only three. Next now, 70th question, consider the following statement. So, it is in the form of assertion and reason. Assertion, a lithium ion battery has higher energy density than a solid state battery. This statement is an incorrect statement, right. So, in a solid state battery, there is no liquid. So, as there is no liquid, the battery is more tight, uh, it is tighter and that is why uh, its volume is lesser, but its energy density will be higher. So, first statement is incorrect. It is solid state batteries which have more energy density than lithium ion. A is incorrect. Reason, unlike solid state electrolytes, lithium ion electrolytes are liquid. So, that is a correct statement. So, only reason is correct and that is why answer is R is correct, but A is incorrect. 70th question, answer is D. Next, 71. Which of the following statements is are considered, uh, is our correct regarding the National Innovation Foundation? First, NIF is an autonomous body under Department of Science and Technology. So, this statement is a correct statement. NIF is uh, autonomous uh, body under uh, Department of Science and Technology. It was established in year 2000 and it is headquartered at Ahmedabad. First statement is correct. Second, NIF is an initiative to strengthen the highly advanced scientific research in India's premier scientific institutions in collaboration with highly advanced foreign scientific institutions. This statement is incorrect. So, what is the uh, purpose of NIF? NIF was established for grassroots technology innovations. It want to make India creative and knowledge based society on the basis of Philip to grassroots technology innovation, not some uh, foreign researchers are coming and they are dealing with uh, the uh, students of high tech institutions in India. No, that is not the purpose of NIF. Second is incorrect. First is correct and that is why answer is A, one only. Question number 71, answer is A. 72. Symptoms like Croia and dystonia are associated with which of the following diseases? So, uh, Croia is a uh, kind of uh, uncontrolled dance like movement and dystonia is abnormal body postures and these are seen in uh, Huntington's disease. It is seen during Huntington disease which is a kind of inherited uh, disease or disorder. It leads to breakdown and death of nerve cells in the part of brain, right. So, uh, it is related to these symptoms, Croia and dystonia are related to Huntington's disease. 72 answer is B. Next now, 73. A new study has found that converting annual crops to perennial bioenergy crops can induce a cooling effect on the areas where they are cultivated. So, this is an important question. When we replace uh, annual, when we replace these uh, these annual crops to perennial bioenergy crops, it leads to production of certain cooling impact in the area where it is cultivated. So, question is asking us with reference to it, 
which of the following can be a part of bioenergy crop so which are those bioenergy crops which we will be able to replace with annual crops with, uh, uh, annual crops and thus uh, helping us to address the temperature in that particular region so it is eucalyptus then miscanthus then uh, switchgrass poplar and willow these are the bioenergy crops that we can cultivate for addressing the temperature in the local area answer is 1 3 4 5 and 7 mentioned in option c 73 answer is c next now now one more question last question 83 so simple question it is which of the following best describes the term artificial neural network so artificial neural network is a uh, algorithm used in deep learning a sub type of artificial intelligence and artificial neural network has got inspiration from biological neural network of human brain and that's why we can say that artificial neural network based machines try to mimic human intelligence so answer of this question is they are computing systems vaguely inspired by the biological neural networks that constitute animal brain 83 answer is a so that is about our discussion of first all india open mock test thank you भाई टाइम लगता है क्या बंद कर